there ain't no stopping us. Fly without boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'd be moving fast. Call me a shooting star. Let them know who you are. Flying up in a bar. Wish on a star. Time to show them who's in charge. Call me a shooting star.
Hello. Yeah, let's try that again. I can't get it right. Hello and welcome, fans, to another Thursday night of League of Legends action. Back on the first call tonight, my name is Jim Lowry, joined, as I was last week, by Ethan Dolan. Uh, Ethan, thanks for having me back, and uh, thanks for letting me do play-by-play in game number one, even though I can't do an intro to save my life. <laughs> Coach, we love having you around. Before we get into it, just going to run through the sponsors quick. The NECC is sponsored by HyperX. No matter who you are or how you play, we're all gamers. And by ESTV, the first ever dedicated channel for esports and gaming personalities. As you said, Coach, back here, second week in a row. It's crazy. We like you or something around here. Uh, but we've got an interesting matchup to kick off the night. David and Goliath, however you want to put it, right? We've got... Illinois Wesleyan, the Titans, 5-0, sitting atop the Champions Division, going up against the Carroll Pioneers, 0-5. What are you expecting to see here, Coach? Uh, what am I expecting to see or what am I hoping to see? Uh, expectation here, uh, I can tell you, I know the coach from Illinois Wesleyan, uh, Callum Fletcher, good friend of mine. I've known him for a long time. I think I've known him for about 20 years. And... Uh, He's, he runs a great team. He runs an absolutely great team. Uh, he's got great recruits. Uh, so I'm really thinking that we're going to see some good stuff out of Wesleyan tonight, and I, I think that might be a problem for Carroll. Yeah, it could be a problem for Carroll indeed. As we said, 5-0, and 0-5 oh, oh on the other end. We've had the pleasure of seeing, I believe, both these teams on stream so far. Carol's got to find an answer, and they have to find it early on as we are in to pick some bands here. Hecarim off the table, as is Fiora and Rumble off of the board. Coach, what do you do when you're in the position that Carol is, when you know coming into the game that you are so heavily favored to lose? What is the mentality coming in? What's a healthy mentality, and what does the mentality think that they have right now for the Pioneers do? Uh, you know, there's, there's two ways to look at it. Well, there's technically three ways to look at it. The third way, the way you don't want to look at it, is that we're going to lose, so it doesn't matter what we do. You don't want to go down that road. That's just a bad road to go down. But the two positive roads to go down are, look, you know, we can play defensively. We can play safe. We can make sure that we force them to come at us. Uh, you're going to be a little bit up behind in the mid and, and early and mid game, uh, but you're going to have a chance in the late game. The other way to do it is to come out swinging, come out and try to hit them right on the chin and say, we're not going to back down. We're going to come right at you. The problem there is if it doesn't work, then you're going to be behind and they might snowball. Uh, but certainly some positive ways to look at it, some positive ways to try to come out here. Uh, and if you're Carol, you've got nothing to lose. And uh, we saw last week Valparaiso going against St. Ambrose. Valpo got destroyed in game one, had absolutely nothing to lose, came out, played their game, game two, got the win, and then came out and really played their game in game three and got the win, got the reverse sweep. So there's nothing more dangerous than a team with nothing to lose. Absolutely, because they... Uh it's, it's kind of just implied in the statement, right? They have nothing to lose. They're 0-5. They're looking for the first win on the year. We'll see if they're able to pull together. I, um, I'll say I don't have the roster in front of me, but I do happen to know the teams here. On the left-hand side, you will have Illinois Wesleyan. On the right-hand side, you will have Carroll coming through. Some initial thoughts. Aurelia Scion Aphelios picked up by Illinois Wesleyan. Scion and Aurelia picked up uh, in the same composition. What what is that indicative? Of? Aurelia mid, um, Scion support. What what are we thinking that really means coming out from the Titans? With the with whoa whoa, uh, we're gonna see some weird stuff here. <laughs> we're gonna see some weird stuff. I was about to say, oh, one hundred percent, that's gonna be Scion support. Uh, however, with a Carthus, I'm Scion like okay, mid. but. The, but then, but then there was a Senna, and I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. So that's going to be weird. I think the le I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Uh, I mean, obviously, Aphelios is their ADC. Uh, I could see Aurelia going mid, though. I could see yeah. Scion top, Aurelia mid. Uh, Aphelios Senna is dirty. And then Karthus Jungle, I mean, talk about snowball. If you got a chance to snowball on a Karthus Jungle, there's the game right there. On the side of the Pioneers, Yorick is a very safe top laner. Very safe, can split push the entire game, can do it well, doesn't have to get really fed to do it. So that's what I was talking about. You know, playing a nice, safe champion, do your job, do what you got to do. Looking at a Sejuani in the jungle, again, a nice, safe champion, a really good lockdown kit. 
you know, with two different stuns. Uh, it's a really good kit for locking down a member of the opposing team. Then looking at a Viger mid, you're looking at another stun. Just looking at all the crowd control. Then you're looking at Ash set, and that's going to be a set support. Uh, and so set has some crowd control. Ash has the massive Ash arrow. So I'm looking at a lot of crowd control coming out of what the Pioneers have there. Uh, so that could be a decider. Uh, it looks like Wesleyan, you know, they're going for a couple of off meta things. I mean, Aphelios is still fairly meta, but Scion, I don't think has been meta for a while. Uh, we did see it last week. Uh, I believe that was in the second, the second match last week, I believe. Yep. Uh, but however, it's not truly meta at the moment. Uh, unless something has changed dramatically that I missed in the meta. <laughs> uh, but no, it's going to be interesting, but I do think you're right. I think that is a really a mid and going into a Viger, that could be interesting. If the Viger gets the crowd control down, Aurelia is going to pop like a balloon, but otherwise Aurelia is going to run all over him. So something that's very interesting to note here is that it is a rule in any CC that you have to select an LCS order in actual draft. Uh, that's indicative that Super Deer is their typical mid laner. Right? Uh, that Kong Ji is their typical ADC. Uh, and they've selected Carve, they start to feel this. There's nothing that says you can't swap lanes, right? But they have to pick in their usual order. So that's something to keep an eye on, right? Is that um, this isn't the You're most. You're right, I missed that. This isn't the most honest composition. Like, th all those things could, like, we, that Aurelia could go mid, Karthus could be going jungle, Scion uh, could be going top of fields, could be going got. But. That's not typical positioning. So Illinois yeah. Wesleyan has something up their sleeve. I'm not quite sure what it is, but no, 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 saying, look at this, with what you just told me, with what you just told me, I think it will be a really a top. I think it'll be a Philios going mid. And I think you're going to see Karthus Senna in the bot lane. No. Sion I've Nungle? seen earlier, no. earlier this year, earlier this year, we played against Randolph Macon in the in the uh, Challengers uh, lower division with NECC, and in our first uh, round matchup against Randolph Macon, they dropped a Karthus ADC on us. So it's been done not only in the past but this season. It's been done, and you are right. There are supposed to be picking in LCS order, and if they're not, that might be kind of a problem. If they're not. Uh, especially, you know, with a, a possible role swap here, because as you talk about lane swapping, that's not a problem, but role swapping, uh, that's where it gets a little bit dicey. You know, the jungler is supposed to carry smite. You know, if you're, if you're not, if you're the, in the jungle position, you're not carrying smite. That's where it gets a little dicey. Yeah. Um, but I could see this lineup actually being as it sits. I could see that being an LCS order. It, uh, it would certainly be off meta. It would certainly be off meta. It could be fun to watch. But if, if I'm Carol and I'm looking at that going, if that's their LCS order, I'm upset. I'm upset. That's showing a little bit of disrespect. And if I'm Carol, I've got a chip on my shoulder right now. And that would just make me play harder. A little bit of disrespect. Can, can we, is it April 1st? Uh, did, I, did I forget to reset my calendar or something? This this doesn't feel real. Like, if that if that is what they're running out with, LCS order, I would be absolutely stunned. But we're going to get a little bit of better ideas as you're talking about who will be holding smite here when we do load in. Scion has smite. Scion is All holding right. smite. All right. Uh, they're running grasp on Sunday. Yeah, that's a Karthus ADC. We're looking at Karthus ADC. That's what we're looking at here, Ethan. Karthus ADC. Uh, just give me five minutes. My brain is catching up. Um, what? Car Karthus oh. ADC running cleanse. Senna support running heal. There's and no grasp ignite in the, the undying. Grasp yeah. of the undying Senna support. I am paused at five seconds. Uh, this is customary. Uh, coach, you paused at five? I am paused at five, Ethan. Mr. Producer, man, I can see on stream that you're paused at five. Let's get it going in five, four, three, two, one, go. This is match number one of the night in the champion division. We've got Illinois Wesleyan, the Titans at five and oh, taking on the Owen and five, Carol Pioneers. The Titans will be coming out on the blue side. Carol coming out on the red. Coach, take it away. All right, as Ethan said, uh, Pioneers coming downhill, coming from the top right to the bottom left. 
And you have Wesleyan coming from the bottom left, going to the top right. So coming uphill is how I like to think about it. Uh, it looks like we will have five points from both teams. Maybe a bit of a deep ward coming here. A little bit of poke coming in from the center, though. She might be in trouble early here. And she will have to just back up there as she did get collapsed upon. So a little bit of uh, uh, just poking around there in the jungle, Ethan. What do, what do you make of that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't want correct. Uh, but it's very in for being. But you did it. You, you did it. Uh, if uh, if you'll give us just a minute, folks. It looks like uh, Mr. Dolan there is having a problem. He's got a little bit of lag going on the stream. Uh, so we're going to see if he can get that one fixed. Uh, we think it's just a connection issue, but we will, of course, keep going here. So it will actually. We talked about what the different matchups could be, and we're actually going to be seeing uh, York going into Aurelia. So we will not see the Aurelia mid lane. And that means we will see Viger going into a Philios, which is a much better matchup for the Viger. Uh, Philios has a little bit more range, but Viger can lock him down. And a Philios, as a marksman, does not quite have the ability to take the damage that Aurelia might or the defensive options that Aurelia has. So that could be interesting. And it looks like possibly some cheese, but they're just going to back off the cheese there in the bot lane. You saw it on the minimap. Uh, so just going to go back to farming here as a little bit of poke comes down in the bot lane. Uh, Ethan, did you get your lag figured out? Uh, are, are, was I'm, I lagging or is it just your guys then? I, I, I am good. And he sounded a lot better, Ethan. And as we look at the bot lane, <laughs> I here, like coming my, across. My coach, one more it's, uh... Coming across here, we're going to see uh, the Senna actually have to flash away here in the bot lane as she got uh, all into there by the set. As we see Karth is still in the front, he's taken this healing from the Senna who's now way in the back. See Ash very low as well though, set as the Karth is trying to do work, trying to back them up to the tower. Uh, taking a look at the minimap, you see all three lanes are pushed in up to the towers for the pioneers here. Uh, good news for their jungler, who will have a much easier time ganking than will uh, Scion from Eleanor Wesleyan. With the lanes this far pushed, Scion might have to dive a tower to get a gank in early game. Uh, and here we go in the bot lane one more time. Scion uh, set going in against the Senna. Sejuani coming in as well. Looks like they're going to fall back on the Karthus, though, in the bot lane. As we're still looking at the fight in the top lane, Aurelia will get first blood. But Karthus will most likely go down here in the bot lane. So it will be a one-for-one one trade. Uh, maybe one-for-two. Karthus will get the Sejuani as well. Remember, Karthus just as dangerous, maybe more dangerous, dead than alive. Ethan, quick 2-1 lead here for the Titans. What are we looking at so far? Uh, yeah, Coach. 1-1 one one in the bot I'm, I'm good. Here, Discord. But we are all a bit great there in the bot lane. As you know, to Karthus is just in danger as in life. And I wanted to comment on this mid lane match with the action here. Midnight right going up super deer. I think super to stop Midnight Rick from farming. You can start stacking up that Viagra. So when all of a sudden, Vygar can 100 or 1 to 100 just about anybody in the whole game. So that's my big key to my out in the mid lane. Who can keep that farm finish, coach? Talking about farm, let's talk about the farm in the jungle. Scion at 31, Sejuani at 16. Yes, Sejuani has the kill, but also has a death. As Sejuani goes in here on to the Scion, it looks like Scion did get the scuttle. Scion going very low though, but the rotation coming in from Aphilios in the mid lane. Set might not be able to get out. Set will get rooted, and Set will go down there. Can they get the return kill onto the Scion is the question. Roots coming across here. Ash will most likely go down. She will. Two for nothing there at the scuttle fight, and the lead increases here for Illinois Wesley. Wow. And you see that big continuing in the top lane as well. Big chase there. Good rotate coming up from Space Maker, Coach. You saw recognizing it coming up. Drop the CC, allowing the rest of the team to get in there. Do the damage necessary. Hold lead growing there early on, not just from the fighting. Illinois Wesley farming very well right now. Illinois Wesley and very efficient on the farming with just about a 3,000 gold lead, and we're only five minutes in here. Uh, along with the gold lead, you see Aurelia already with Vampiric Scepter up there 
in the top lane. So a full item advantage up in the top lane. Uh, in the mid lane, Aphilios already has his BF sword. So you're looking at two huge items on solo laners that uh, just will spell a lot of problems for the pioneers here just moving forward. It's just it's going to get worse. So as we keep looking, though, uh, Sejuani up here in the top lane trying to help push the wave in. I don't know if that's exactly what they're going to want to do because Cyan will be able to come up and gank a little bit easier now. Uh, York got to push out of there, going to drop some wards. He's actually going to back, so they push the wave so York can back. And Sejuani going to go back into her own jungle. Cyan coming, though. There's the tower dive against the Viker. So he's going to be caught old. under tower there. Yeah, could have quite been it. Mandra, true coach. So, yeah, caught under tower. And Cyan will go down. Uh, you know, a couple seasons ago, inting Cyan was a thing. I don't think it's meta right <laughs> now, though. <laughs> Ting Cyan, Cyan and River Den. Both, uh, both some up their strats from back in the day. Yeah, uh, but at the moment, that's just going to go down as a kill for Viger, and giving Viger money is the last thing you want to do. Uh, Viger, one of the infinitely scaling champions here, as we look at the bot lane, still pushing in. Just pushing, pushing, pushing. Uh, and we take a look here, uh, and Karth is farming quite efficiently for a mage getting poked in the bot lane. And Senna, with all of the range in the world at the moment, seeing her hitting her Q from great distance, as more damage coming down onto the Ash. And it looks like she was able to get away from that last root there. But just incredible farming from the side of uh, Wesleyan at the moment. I mean, 51-39 in the top lane, 51-33 in the jungle, 59-45 in the mid lane, 52-30 in the bot lane. Uh, you see a little bit more farm on Set than you do on Senna, but Senna is on the poke item, so her gold is coming from elsewhere. Uh, Set trying to go in here. Set is going to get rooted, uh, and he will go down to the Karthus. Unfortunate there. He was trying to pull them under tower so they would take tower aggro. Unfor uh, unable to do so, he paid for it with his life. Second death there for X Factor on the set. You see a roam here from the York, though, as we cut away from that one back to the bot lane as Ash is getting dove under tower. She will get blown up by the Karthus. But Aphilios will go down as well. Another kill going on to the Viger. Senna very low down there, but with no one there to take advantage of it. But she will be able just to walk away. But let's talk about a second kill there for the Viger in the mid lane. Uh, yeah. Get a little bit fed. Get a little bit fed indeed. I mean, I already came back with the M-Flank, but might get ran down here, Coach. Side swag! Picks it up with a shield blast. <laughs> Alapedia look like they're going to go down as well. Um, so really much happening as you down. had the mic over. <laughs> A really, a really a follow down from the top lane, found Yorick just in the jungle and able just to jump on him and say, hey, how you doing? How's the family? How's it going? Why don't you go back to the fountain and meet him? Uh, so two quick kills there for Wesleyan as their lead is now ballooned to four and a half thousand gold here, just under nine minutes in. Two kills for the Aurelia, one for the Scion, one for the Aphilios, three for the Karthus. And talk about, you know, scaling on the Viger, another person you don't want to snowball is the Karthus. Already picked up a Lost Chapter and a Blasting Wand at nine minutes. Absolutely. He is level six, so what his first alt is going to be a decent one. He's already ulted, actually. Secure to kill bot lane with ult. Uh, Did I miss the ult? I missed yeah, the Yeah, Brownie, Brownie died in the last ult there. They try to find something here. And look at Kong Zhi over the wall code. So much damage already. You were talking about the ultimate ability, but dropping those Skittles putting down a lot of damage even. Absolutely. Uh, one of the best things about... Apologies for the noise in the background there. The rain has gotten a lot more uh, frequent and heavy here in Fayad, Iowa. But yeah, no, the uh, the Q from Karthus being able to get spammed over the wall there. Nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. Uh, and Karthus using it to great effect here. As you see, Scion solos the first Drake, which is a Cloud Drake, which is absolutely massive for a team, including a Karthus, giving him a little bit extra cooldown. Ooh. As Aurelia once again solos New York. Sejuani coming in behind, though. Sejuani gets the stun, trying to do a little bit more, trying to pull the Aurelia under tower, unable to do so, Aurelia will get the double kill there in the top lane, extending this lead and extending her own lead up there in the top lane. Uh, we see Dogewater Cutlass and a recurve bow, as we see back in the bot lane. Well, they don't meet her tower here, Coach. 
diving the tower. They get both the Ash and the Set. One for the Karthus, one for the Senna. Absolutely diving that tower. I think that uh, at this point, Wesleyan might be racing themselves trying to see who can get the first tower. Absolutely. Uh, the area around that tower was zoned to be destroyed and they did not heed the warning getting out soon enough they had no business staying in a tower that low especially considering you are uh go the champions are going up against right the range coming through from the karthus from that senna uh you, you just can't stay in her tower there's no chance and kicking it back even a little further sharks are us you know just won that 2v1 a big part of the 2v1 is how you went a little early uh there was trickly coming through <laughs> Oh, and there you go. Midnight Rook on the Viger in the mid lane. We talked about this is a better matchup for him than the Aurelio would have been. And Aphelios not with as many tools to get away. Locked him down and deleted him. Now going to go back and spend some of his hard earned gold. That might be a full Luden Zeko when he gets back to lane. We'll see here just a hot second. But before that happens, we'll see that the bot lane from Illinois Wesleyan has pushed into the mid lane with Scion. They have three on the mid tower. And I don't think Sejuani can do anything. I don't think Yorick can do anything. And I think that tower might just be lost. Uh, the Maiden does come out from the York, but the Wall of Pain comes up. And they're going to try to walk through it. That's a bad choice. And trying to walk through the wall, that's going to be cheap shot on the queue from the Karthus. The Senna going to finish it off. Scion says, oh, I have this in my back pocket. I'm just going to drop the Rift Herald. And that will be the mid tower there. You see uh, Viger getting a little bit of damage there on the Aphelios once again as the event horizon goes up. But just perfect walling from the Karthus, getting them stuck out. Karthus will pick up the kill on the Sejuani. Rift Herald still pushing Ash forward. Arrow, one through. more charge. Looks like the Ash Arrow missed everybody that I saw. You can back me up there. <laughs> wide, wide right, wide right. Wide right, just a bit outside. As uh, it looks like there will not be a final charge on the base tower, but two towers mid lane going down. And then they're looking, they're searching for the Yorick here. And they're going to get the root. They're going to find the root. He's going to drop his circle behind him, though. He's going to buy himself a little bit of time. Uh, however, that will be the top tower falling to the Aurelia there as well. So just sieging across the map are the Titans. Absolutely. Uh, a, a bit of a scuffle developing here once again, Coach. You think Jalapeno's going to jump up here on the top side looking for an entry? Trying. He's looking. It says, you want to hear there's four members of the Pioneers here. Uh, and Scion will use his ultimate to get away from the Event Horizon there. But Aphelios coming in the backside. Aphelios, he's not fed yet, but he's still a very strong champion. They're looking for him. He's got damage coming in. If they can get a little bit of crowd control, Viger will be able to do something. But he will get the kill on oh. the... Oh, and then he'll get the cleanse no! off the Sejuani ultimate, and he will run away, but no! Sej trying to come in, Sej will clean it up, flash forward, able to pick it up. A great maneuver from Aphelios, though, with the flash cleanse to get away from the Sejuani stun ultimate. However, the rest of the Pioneers having to back up, and this might be another tower going down. The bot lane from the Titans, 5-1 and one and 3-0, and oh, so 8-1 and one combined with a combined seven assists. They have touched them all. So absolute craziness coming out of the bot lane here. Absolutely. From, from Illinois Wesleyan. Kong Ji and Space Maker making it happen. We saw Kong Ji finally get to use that cleanse there. Makes sense coming through. You see two members do have cleanse and it's really deep for that event horizon in my mind. And one of the great I think it's the best basic ability in the game, not ultimate ability. Uh, Event Horizon, just the CC, the stun is so big, that circle is so massive in team fights, you really catch a lot of people. So, the rationale for the plants kind of coming through now. Coach, this neck have to be on toes if you are Carl. Requiem, the ultimate ability for Karthus is up once again. So much damage coming through on that. Yeah, with a full Ludens and a 9-stack Magi, that's going to be a lot of damage coming through on the Requiem. Uh, you were talking about the Cleanse, though, being for the Event Horizon. Remember, there's also Sejuani's Ultimate, which is a stun. There's also Ash's Ultimate, which is a stun. Uh, both of those are very nice to have Cleanse for. Uh, so, and we talked about all the crowd control. You know, and you can basically use Cleanse on, against any of the abilities from any member of the Pioneers. Uh, at the moment, though, you see the Pioneers. You see Aphelios Senna maneuvering together in the bot lane. 
Uh, and with Aurelia coming up behind them, they might be pushing for that bot tower. You see Karthus split pushing topside. Usually a terrible idea for Karthus to split push, being a swishy mage, but as strong as he is right now, uh, it's a little bit better than normal. He will still back away from the Yorick, though. And then Scion it just takes out that Infernal Drake. Easy money. Puts it in his pocket. Nobody there from the Pioneers. And then Aphilios is rotated to the mid side. But here we go. Uh, Pioneers coming in here. It's a 3v3. It's a 4v3. Here, it was a 3v3 now. It's Sejuani goes down. They get the Aurelia as well, though. It's a 3-on-2 running fight here. Scion turns around, trying to do some damage, buying Senna some time. Scion's ultimate is not up, so I think he is just gone. Requiem came through, did not get a kill, but it bought enough damage for Scion to get a kill. Aphilios re-engages, he gets a kill, Scion gets another kill, and all of a sudden it's a 4, 1 for 4 there from Wesleyan, as Requiem itself did not get any kills, but it put the Pioneers in a position where the damage could come through from the other champions, and that right there could be the beginning of the end here, Ethan. Super Deer coming to making the Nears run kill. Wow, under their own tower, there is no refuge from the Requiem coach. Absolutely beautiful airing of damage. There is, oh, caught out again in the jungle here, coach. Tower Chuck and Super so Deer. So going in, gets the stun once again, does not have the cleanse this time. Uh, the problem with that, though, is once Sejuani does get a stun, uh, she can no longer stack her passive, and it looks like she's going to get collapsed on here, and that's all she wrote. Aurelia came in, closed the door. Uh, something for you Sejuani fans, uh, Sejuani, um, not main, because if you're a main, you know, but if you're trying to pick up Sejuani, remember, if you use your ultimate against the target and stun them, you cannot stun them with your passive until your passive comes back. So something to remember there. Uh, but, I mean, had to use it there, had to use the ultimate there, try to stop him from getting away. Unfortunate that his two members of his team were behind him, ready to come help. Um, as we're looking, it's Mark trying to pick us from farming. It looks like farming going on everywhere right now. Pioneer's trying to pick it back up. I had top lane farm Aurelia up about 60 on the Yorick. About 70 up in the jungle are the Titans. Only about 35 for the mid laners, but an, about 70 for the ADCs. So talk about farming efficiently. Wesleyan with almost perfect farm on two members. Absolutely insane. They are they are keeping up at an absolutely insane rate right now. The thing that's impressed me outside the farm is just like I said in the last fight, they worked together so so well. They knew the magic number of damage they needed to get uh, all of those kills picked up. And what did they do? They waited, they were patient, they added it up. Ash coming through, that's not gonna connect. Uh, yeah, they, they really played it well. I'm curious to see if they'll do the same to this team fight here, Coach. All right, Ashar did miss their Y to the right one more time. You're going to get a charge out of the Rift Herald onto the inhibitor. If they can keep the Rift up, it might get one more charge. Nope, they will get taken down there before it can charge a Nexus Tower. So we will not see a Dancing Rift finale here, as Karthus will get deleted there by the Viger. Requiem comes in, though, will get the Ash. Remember, he's just as deadly dead as he is alive. So the Requiem come in, we'll turn that into a one for one as the Pioneers will try to clear out their base. Uh, as for the Titans though, they're gonna march it down to the bot lane and they're going to try to break the tier two tower in the bot lane, should not be that hard at the moment. Three members here, they're just gonna run past it, dump the damage, Set will have to back up there. And running out of towers are the Pioneers. Yeah, absolutely. Running out of just about everything. Towers, health cars, ADCs in that last fight. Played very well. I love the aggression. You see Kong G flashing in there. Probably didn't get the result exactly they wanted, but trading ADC for ADC, accruing some sort of value, really just shows how powerful Kong G is right now with the item. Does have that Ooms Echo. Has a 9 stack mage, guys. Is working towards their next item. Uh, look, looking so strong just across the board right now. I, I, I'm ready for this Aphelios pop-off, coach. It feels like Super Deer has been building a building. They're on the edge of the verge. Just some massive, stupid amount of damage. I'm holding my breath for that the next fight. The one item, he's got half of his second item, so it might be the two-item power spike that you're waiting for. Flash over the wall there, gets Sejuani out of harm's way. She will get rooted, though. Scion ability gets... Uh, uh, Stopped there as he got pulled by the set. Tower tier two will go down in the top side. 
but the damage from Aphilios going down onto the York. Maybe I spoke too soon about him only having one item as he deletes the York. Sejuani Alt comes out, though, onto the Scion. It's not long enough for the Pioneers to take advantage of, though. Ooh. Vent Horizon comes down. Everyone from the Titans avoids it. Set trying to help out the Ash. Ash goes down again. Super Minion now on the tower. And they're out of other minions, though, so it's going to be aggro from the tower onto the Scion. You see in the bot lane, it is Aurelia going for the bot tower as the siege will continue here. Bot tower about to fall two more shots. There goes the bot tower. They'll go for the inhibitor as well as the rest of the team uh, will keep the pioneers honest underneath their nexus turrets. So here we go. This is the beginning of the end here at 21 minutes in what has been a dominant performance from the Titans as there goes the second inhibitor. Yeah, T Titans with quite the speedy performance here, Coach, and they might just stick around to our end. We see some backs there, but uh, they have the Red Cube available. Uh, they have Aurelia Alti available. Like, they have, they have the resources, that Vanguard's Edge. I think they can do a lot here. The one thing I'd be waiting for is that Moonlight uh, Vigil to come through, that Aphelios Alti, but they're going to slow roll it just a little bit. Don't want to make any rash mistakes. They're going to pick up the third dragon, putting them on soul point. Oh, so important for closing up that, that Drake soul is. The only thing that can stop them at this point in time, Coach, is Midnight Rush. That Vigard is getting massively bigger and bigger and bigger with the passive. It's the only thing that I can possibly see uh, prolonging this game to so a point of comeback. Now, we should have ruled out, right? We saw that Valparaiso come back. You really never know what's in the cards, but Midnight Rook has to be the person to get them there. Midnight Rook would be the, the person to get them there if it was going to happen. We see Aphilios keeping them honest in base as they take a, a, a un, uh, unapproachable Baron here. The, you know, the Pioneers can't leave their own base, so the Baron will go over to the Titans without a fight. Uh, as the Titan, uh, as the Pioneers just have to sit there on base, they have to get rid of the Super Minions here. Uh, we did see, as they were backing, that Aphilios did get hit with the Ash Arrow, had to spend the Cleanse. So both Cleanses currently down for Wesleyan. So that could matter here in what will most likely be the final team fight. Uh, it could be a thing to watch out for, because Cleanse not available. Uh, we might get some good crowd control, and we might get some, uh, some members of the Titans falling down here. But good wave clear there from the Aphilios, making sure that the waves continue pouring in. They're going to go after the base tower here oh. in the top lane. Cyan going to dive in. He's going to get brought behind the Nexus Towers by the set ultimate. Sichuani will go down, though. Ash will go down. York will go down. Cyan will go down as well. But they took out the base tower, which was the target. Set will go down. It's a one for four at the moment. Midnight Rook on the fountain. Not a lot he can do. He will have to sit there and watch everything burn below him. And he will get the kill on the Senna. So a little bit of respect there on the Senna kill. But the rest of it will fall. And that will do it for game number here, one here, the first match of the night. The Titans take care of business coach no one would deny them that game number one win not a fed vigar none of the rest they were so dominant uh and i i didn't realize it kind of snuck up on you uh the end of that game uh they kind of play dominantly but they almost lull you uh to sleep with like the teamwork and the synergy right there was no like very uh jump out of your chair like oh my gosh like what a play the outplay they played it slow they played well together they dove towers as a team uh they bounced tower aggro they did everything right like if league of legends was old like if that was a basketball game we just witnessed this like peak spurs happen uh that, that was like your your mom's favorite team just played some league of legends they did it fundamentally they did it well and they got the win and that's the only thing to say, but it was just pretty good fundamental League of Legends. They took a couple of chances, uh, but you could take a couple. If you're that far ahead, you could take a couple, especially when they work out for you, and especially if the right people are taking the chances. If you have a Karthus, he can do a little bit more under tower, because even if he dies, he'll be able to finish what he was doing. It's not like your typical ADC where, oh, I'm a marksman, I'm going under tower, they're one shot, oh, I'm dead, they're going to survive at one shot, whereas Karthus is like, oh, I died. All right. And then just keeps going with whatever they were doing. Um, so when you've got that kind of thing going on there, uh, you don't have to worry as much about your ADC diving a tower. When you've got a Senna behind them healing, you don't have to worry so much about diving tower. Um, 
the, the mistakes that were made in my mind were the scion the scion jungle with the charges in especially the one into the mid lane getting himself stuck under tower it was a great event horizon by midnight rook said hey you can either stand in the circle and get shot by the tower or you could try to leave the circle and get stunned and get shot by the tower either way it's fine with me and uh i just there's nothing to say about that one like scion just got stuck uh, I would say the weakest lane for the Titans in that particular game was their mid lane. Uh, but you're also seeing a marksman going up against a, a control mage. And that's going to happen to a marksman going up against a control mage. Uh, as you said, though, Aphelios was able to stack some kills, was able to stack farm, and late game was able just to do whatever they wanted to whoever they wanted, when, who, they, whatever they wanted. Uh, and you know that's what marksmen do in the late game. So it's just another way to get your marksmen some kills. Just put them in mid lane, take your mage, put them in the ADC position, and you know just have at. Absolutely. And uh, I think that something that's very interesting about that is that uh, the Philios out farmed the Vigar at the end of the day. Still had more gold by the end of the whole ordeal. So uh, you said they took chances, and to me, yeah, they took a few. It felt like they took their most chances. In champ select, right? They came out with something unusual, something that we haven't seen before in the NECC. It, it played great, though. Uh, it came out it with, like a well-oiled machine. It absolutely did. Uh, but we were talking about. Let's talk about the farm for a minute, though. We were talking about those farm numbers, and uh, they talk about that. You know, ten farm a minute is basically the minimum you need to be considered professional level farm. Like, good farm is 10 farm a minute. And for the majority of that game, that's where the Titans were. The, for the majority of that game, they were right at 10 farm a minute. And it's really hard to do anything if you're the Pioneers when you're just watching your creep disappear in front of your eyes. And you get caught under your own tower. And when you're caught under your own tower, your tower starts taking your farm. And that's the first way you end up going down. Uh, the Titans had an advantage in gold that entire game, and it started out with the farm score. So seeing if they could do that again in game number two, uh, it could be another quick one. If if the Titans just go into game two and just farm that effectively again, it could just be another quick game. But yeah, as you were talking about uh, their champ select, it was interesting. I mean, none of it. Uh, I mean, it all worked. It's all stuff that has been done in the past, just not done a lot, with the exception, obviously, of Senna support, which is done all the time. And uh, But Marksman going mid, that's nothing new. We see Lucian go mid. Uh, we've seen Samira in the mid lane. She's the hybrid Marksman. I mean, I've seen Kaisa mid lane in Season 9. Kaisa mid lane happened Ooh, a few times. Uh, that, that's different, Coach. Come on, that's, that's, that's a little a, different. That Kaisa mid lane was... It was, it was, hey, and then, you pulled up a damn select and solo kill. And Kaisa mid lane was on the other team. No, sir. Yeah. I'm conceding. But then, like, this uh, is worth we, my time. But we didn't know where the Aurelia was going to go. Aurelia top, that's, I mean, not too new. I mean, haven't seen a lot of Aurelia tops this year. I mean, it's been a lot of bruisers up there in the top lane. But Aurelia top is a, is a very common pick in most metas. Uh, and then Scion jungle. I mean, Scion jungle that was one. meta. I think season eight was the last time Scion Jungle was meta. Can we, oh, you're, you're saying it wrong, Coach. It's Scion Cy, Jungle was meta. Sure, Come meta. It was, uh, it was all right, but I mean, ever, it, it worked. Uh, if you get the but, win, you it know, doesn't matter. You can say whatever you, you want. Have, At the end of the day, if you win yeah, the game, that's all that matters. All that matters. All that matters. Uh, and as we take a look here, I mean, we're looking. You got diamond, gold, challenger, diamond, silver on the side of the Titans. That's just hard to go against. Uh, ironically, you know, talking about it, we said that their uh, their worst lane might have been their mid laner. That's their challenger player. You know, I didn't know that when I was talking about it, but I was just like, oh yeah, like the the one lane they didn't absolutely win was their mid lane. I turn, I'm like, oh yeah, there's their challenger player. Yeah, now I look dumb. Um, right, Sideway? He hey, was man. there. Hey. Yeah. Everyone has bad games. I'm not not taking anything away. It was factual. You know, the closest lane was the mid lane. The Vigar was right there with Sideway the whole game. But Sideway definitely put themselves at the disadvantage by locking in that Aphelios. Not something that feels strong into the Vigar. Not a match I personally played. Not a match I don't think many people have personally played. Uh, but utter dominance across the board. As we do have a spectator link here for the pro draft. If we want to hop into that real quick coach i don't know if you see that in the chat there but yeah uh illinois yeah. wesleyan took care of business in game number one carol carol did not do nearly anything in the mid game it really felt very one-sided 
It looks like we might have a couple of subs here as well in this one. As I'm looking at the board there, and I, I'm thinking uh, we might be seeing some subs, maybe. Mm. Oh. Or, or are we seeing members of the pioneers on the wrong side? I, I think it's just that. I think the pioneers are uh, not not all on the correct side there. Uh, they're right. going to sort it out. They're they're into the draft though. <laughs> it just it just got caught uh, in league chess. They they realize that they want a red side. Uh, but we are in a pick some bands. Illinois Wesleyan deciding on their first band right now, Coach. Uh, if you're Illinois Wesleyan after such a dominant performance, are you changing anything? If you're Carroll after such a thorough defeat, what are you changing in picks and bands? We seem to see a Fiora Hecarim off the board right away. I I don't think you change anything as Carroll for your picks bands. I think you scouted them. I think you know what you want to pick and ban. And I think, I mean, if they're going to be picking stuff that that's, that's that far off meta, there's really no way you could ban them out. So I don't think you change your strategy here. I think you go back in with the same strategy. And uh, I think they're going to get rid of the Aurelia, which, yeah, that's fine. Aurelia carried out of the top lane. But you don't want to change the strategy that got you, you know, that you spent time thinking about. You don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. So uh, as we're going to see, Orin locked in, first lock in there. Absolutely. Uh, I, I like the lock in for Illinois Wesleyan. Although, like seeing how fast they just won, it is a little surprising considering Orn is a champion where you're kind of like, yeah, we're going to play for the late game. We're going to wait for these ornaments. We're going to grind out our value across the course of the game. We're not going to go in necessarily early on. Sejuani run back just the same from Carroll. You know, you talk about that. You talk about Orn being so good in the mid to late game. Uh, let's be honest, though. Orn early game uh, has the damage potential, especially in the early game, before there's a lot of defensive items out there. And I'm not just saying that because my top laner mains Orn. That's not the only reason I'm saying it. Uh, but he does, and I've seen it. And I've seen him do it, and I've seen him pop off on people very early, pre-level 6. So, uh, something to think about is that Orn can do it as we look at Zack and Scion both getting locked in. So that could get interesting. That could be the Scion support we were thinking about last game, as Zack is most definitely a jungler. And then we see Lux locked in for the mid lane, most likely, for Carol. Although Lux could fl uh, go flex down to support as well. Uh, and I don't know about you, Ethan, but I really love it when teams have a flex pick. I really love the strategy behind being able to flex a champion around. As we see Poppy come out there, a, that's a great answer to an Orn top lane. Absolutely. Uh, a able to deflect that dash forward. Uh, just great answer. Uh, and now it's going to have to be Orn mid late game. Now We've Orn got, early is not going to work. We've got six picks and five tanks. Uh, da, 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 da. Hello, Wendy's. I found the beef. Uh, there is <laughs> so many health bars here. If, if anyone remotely tankies pick the rest of his picks and man fades, I would be extremely surprised coach. All right, well, the, the picks that we're missing here, I, we think, from Illinois Wesleyan are their mid laner and their marksmen, who are usually not as tanky, but who knows the way it's going know. right now. And then we're still looking for a support from Carol, unless that's Poppy's support. We're still looking for a support from Carol. So that could be tanky. So you might see one more tankier pick here uh, for Carol. Uh, you had a set support last game. It's still on the table. It's still available. York was banned away, so they're thinking that might not be a poppy uh, top. They're thinking that might be a poppy support if you're looking at the bands coming out of Illinois Wesleyan. So, but we can still see set come through. Set can still come through as the as these uh, support here for Carol. Uh, and we're gonna see oh. Chogath. That and a moon no! A moon no! A moon no! Uh, I, uh, I could not tell you right now who is going where. I could not tell you. I think Ethan lost his mind, folks. He's going to stand up and walk it off. Deep breaths, Ethan. Deep breaths, my friend. Deep There's breath. Too much deep beef, breath. coach. Too much beef, live. Ethan says. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and a Heimer. A Heimer coming in. So I'm thinking that will be a Lux support, a Heimer mid lane. So I'm thinking for Carol, we're going to get Poppy in the top, Sejuani in the jungle. I'm thinking that's going to be a Heimer mid with a Varus Lux bot lane. My, uh, my, my, my friend Ethan here going nuts, losing his mind. I need Ethan, some water. I need some glasses. Some I need something. Get something, get something Ethan. Uh, find some ice to sit on. Something. Oh, Calm yourself. Calm yourself, Ethan. 
Five uh, head look, coach. Looking at Illinois Wesleyan, I could not begin to tell you where those champions are going, with the exception of saying, I will bet money that Zach is the jungle. <laughs> But that's the only one. That's the only one I would put money on is that Zach's in the jungle. Wait, uh, wait, wait. Why, Zach? Hold on. Shogath jungle because bite smite. Why not just two junglers? Go to I, my, my third eye has been open with this composition. There is zero possibility that's too wacky. They could go all five tanks mid, and I would just sit back after that picks a man and be like, all right, that makes sense. You know? All right, no, no. I think if I... If I was going to put money down, it was going to be Orn in the top, Zach in the jungle. Actually, did they pick in order? No, 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 no. Okay. no, no, no. Orn in the top, it. Orn on the top, Zach in the jungle, Mundo in the mid lane with a Cho'Gath ADC and a Scion support. Cho'Gath ADC is not the worst thing we've ever seen. <laughs> Stop. No, he, don't sugarcoat it, coach. You there's can't. a little bit of range. There's a little bit of range there. Mundo in the mid lane. He's got the he's got the, he's got the axes. He's got the, the butcher. If he can throw, that's that's not terrible. Orn top lane, I mean they didn't I mean Orn top lane is a top laner, and Zach is a jungler. So we'll see though. We'll get to see right here is the LCS because they did pick LCS last time. So we will see here as the bands are gonna come across first. Deep breath season. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Hey, you know what, Coach? You're right here. Hold on. I'm gonna. I need a little something for this. Get a little bit of the agua. Get a little bit of the agua. There we go. There we go. <sighs> Illinois Wesleyan, you brought it out of me. All right. <laughs> I don't know what if you uh, all right, the we get out what, what two puffs of albuterol cost. Right, so it will you better be Sai on top. Sai on top. <laughs> okay. Sai right. on top. Okay. Okay, so nothing, nothing too wacky. Mundo, Sai on top works. Mundo bot. Cho'Gath has to be mid. It's Mundo, Orn bot, um, Zach jungle. It's got to be Zach jungle. It's Mundo jungle. Oh, okay. it's not. It's not. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's not. Mundo it's jungle. Houston. It's Cho'Gath mid, which means that means I, I definitely lost that bet, my producer Second says. Nailer. Which means we, <laughs> Which means... Oh. We are going to be left with a, what is that? A, a Zach and an Orn in the bot lane. Okay, it's going to be a Zach, Zach Orn bot lane. Zach support got played a little bit at the beginning of the season because they added Alco. So you could like uh, elastic slingshot cheese over the wall. And no one knew what was going on. But otherwise, this is stupid. Like we, I think we're making the mistake here, coach, of trying to rationalize this. When we just have yeah. to accept, this is the, this is like if someone was making brownies and they didn't have milk, so they substituted baked beans instead. Like there comes <laughs> a point where you can no longer rationalize anyone's decision, and you're like, "Yep, right. that's a baked I mean, yeah, brownie." I mean, let's 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 put it. I mean, like if you're making brownies and you don't have any eggs, but you have applesauce, you can use applesauce. If you didn't know, you can use applesauce instead of eggs. But you're right. This is like substituting baked beans for milk. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't uh, make sense. And, you know, we were talking about before. We were talking about uh, what what could Wesleyan do to endanger themselves here. And this is it. Uh, they're thinking, hey, we, we've got this. No problems. If I'm looking at that draft, I talked about earlier. The draft in the game one. If I'm if I'm Carol, I got a chip on my shoulder. Forget a chip on my shoulder. If I'm Carol right now, I am supremely upset at the it's lack a bag of, of Doritos on your shoulder. It's not a singular chip. They've been stacked. Yeah, up. it's and that is uh, almost almost a lack of respect there from Illinois Wesleyan. Just saying, it doesn't matter what we do, we're gonna beat you anyway. Uh, so Carol gotta be gotta be upset right now. Let's see if that causes them to play any differently. Uh, I'm hoping they don't tilt. If they tilt, it's going to be a quick one. Uh, but if they just take that and focus on their gameplay, uh, this this could get interesting. If Carol just says, we're going to focus on our gameplay, we're going to focus on what we know we can do. And the fact that, I mean, look, there's no marksman on the side of of the Titans. Uh, so once you get any kind of percentage health damage, once you pick up a Bork, once you pick up a Blood Razor, uh, you're doing percentage health damage, tank doesn't matter. Tank no longer matters when you're doing percentage health. Uh, you could pick up 
Morellos to stop any of the healing for the tanks. On the Lux, you can get Morellos. I mean, Heimerdinger, Borkheimer, all your turrets having percentage damage. Borkheimer. I'm just saying. Oh. I'm just saying. If they're going to do that, every item you buy has to be a tank-destroying item. It has to be. Some... Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. There are some bold things being stated in here. Some very, very bold sentiments. Chat, we do see you. Uh, Crane, but, uh, I did hit the inhaler. That is no joke. I'm a large man who also happens to have asthma. Um, I, I, uh, breaking this down rationally, Lux is not a good We pick can't. Because Lux is such a burst mage. Um, yes. So even if you build Morellos, you're only stacking it once or twice per fight. I really think that's a poor pick. However, Varus is the... That's the... Great that's pick. Great Brownie. pick. Oh, you want to take Melter, you get a Varus. It's it's just that easy. Um, so Here, here's really the thing, though. You're talking about that Lux pick, though. You're talking about that Lux pick. There was no way they could know they were going to see oh, five absolutely tanks. absolutely not. No, absolutely not. There was no not. way. It was yeah. picked early, and when they picked it, it wasn't a bad pick. Oh, they yeah, it would have been the lead of the century. If, they, if, they, if you would have predicted <laughs> that Cho'Gath, Dr. Minogue would be the last two picks, it would have been the read of the century. You go out and buy at least 22 lottery tickets. If yeah. you did that, you're yeah. someone who bought Absolutely. Like, a box of masks, a box of toilet paper the day before COVID hit. Like, right. that's, some, that's some galaxy brain stuff. <laughs> now, the, the best thing they could have done, instead of that Lux, I mean, the best pick they could have had, the only thing that would have been perfect for them anywhere is a Trundle. Oh, Tr oh Trundle yeah. 1v5's that. Trundle 100% 1v5. Uh, Trundle. And oh, I would yeah. I would even go like, man, just cheese it on Trundle. Just go Blood Razor Bork. Oh, yeah. Just have two two different methods of percentage damage. Send it. And Send just it. go, bye. Thank <laughs> have fun storming the Golly. castle. Golly. So, gonna uh. be interesting. Uh, but yeah, no, you're gonna have to find as much percentage damage at this point with that team comp. I'm telling you, Cinder Hulk is 100% of the time played on Sejuani. Play Blood Razor, see what happens. You got nothing to lose. Oh, Blood nothing Razor, to lose. Have Blood Razor motto for that percentage damage. Play attack speed Sejuani, see what happens. I'm just saying, you could. What are we seeing here, Ethan? I don't even know. I don't even know what we're seeing here right now. The brown coach. That's what we're seeing. It's the only way to rationalize. We got some baked bean brownies. If you're just joining us, game number one was a quick 21-minute game which Illinois Wesley and the Titans got the dub. We're here in game number two. The Pioneers getting it done. I'm going to pause it five seconds. Seven seconds from the producer. All right, coach, you get seven seconds. I'm at seven seconds. All right, on go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And we are heading here to game number two. Carol will be staring down the most bold composition to ever grace the rift here at the NECC. Scion top, Mundo jungle, Cho'Gath mid, Orange Zach bot lane. Woo-wee. I tell you, we spice brewing take it away. Let us start here by talking about the fact that on the side of the Titans, look at the summoner spells. I'm seeing Exhaust Ignite on the Scion. I'm seeing Smite Ghost on the Mundo. I'm seeing Ghost Barrier on the Cho'Gath. As they're going in here, they're looking for some cheese kills early. Uh, we're seeing Teleport Flash on the Orn. Flash Ignite is the... The, the only one that no. makes sense for a support. They're chasing down yeah, the Lux. Not like this. Chasing down the Lux, and that will be an early kill on the Mundo. Varus, though, going in on the Orn, going to have to be careful. They're collapsing on him. He has no... Oh, okay, he had the vision. I was going to be really, really upset there if he didn't see that one. So just absolute cheese here with all of the tank into the bot side jungle. They're on the top side as well. It's a double invade here from Illinois Wesleyan. And that's how this one's going to start. Uh, the Sejuani... I'm sorry, it's not a double invade, but it's going to be an attempted steal there. Uh, my apologies, I, I read the colors wrong. Uh, so an attempted steal there from the Scion. Didn't get it. Sejuani did take the red buff. 
but the blue buff going the way of the Titans. So it's either going to be vertical jungling or Sejuani will be down a buff here in the early going. On the top side, they're going in on to the Scion, though. And Poppy just going to go back and start farming lane. Sejuani chasing the Scion all the way back towards the blue buff. He's going to have to go around the long way, buying Poppy a little bit of time for some free farm there in the top lane. In the mid lane, uh, the poke is happening already. And that in the bot lane here, poking as well. But Zach's going to go in. I think we're going to see a lot of all in here in the bot lane. And you're going to need it. Drop. Varus is in trouble. Varus is ignited. Lux backing up, popping a potion. Uh, so we did see that Lux started the game with her circle, not her uh, light binding there. As she will get hit, pulled in by the Zach. That might be too much. A little bit more damage. She could fall. And that will happen. Zach will get her, but Lux will get the Orn. So there you go. Uh, I think the minions had a little bit of help on that one. There's uh, Heimer gets a stun onto the Cho'Gath. And going back here in the bot lane, uh, and they will go back in on the Varus. So the Scion being played by Cywag, that is their challenger player. So we'll keep an eye on the Scion. He is the high end player here for the Titans. As Mundo coming in with the gank, and that'll be, oh. Ooh, great save there! An amazing save by Taco Truck on the Sejuani! Great save, charging in, st stalling out the Mundo, getting the kill, walking away. So, uh, uh, you know, just trying for cheese there in the mid lane, and the Pioneers just said no. Absolutely. Oh, time. Taco Truck coming through. Some urgent response there, Coach. But the takes are up one kill right now. They aren't looking too bad. The mid game is where I think they're going to have the biggest amount of trouble. Uh, when we start to get these early skirmishes, they won't be able to engage at all from a distance. They really need to rely on their ultimate abilities. They need Shark Taurus to hit their ultimate. They need the Ornhorn to come through. They need the Zac E to come through. But they might be able to chase down Tackle Truck here, Coach. Tackle Truck is getting slowed by the Mundo. Poppy here, though. Heimer coming in. Stuns come across. And that will be another kill there. That one will go on the Poppy as now Taco Truck's going to have to flee from the Raging Scion body. And it, it, Scion will get the aggro off the chickens and will go down. So we're all tied up here. This is an even game. And this is what I'm talking about. I think Eleanor Wesleyan might have bit off more than they can chew. Yeah, the Pioneers are sticking around in the coach. And as long as they keep their head on straight, they should be able to get the win here. They just really have to stay focused. Like you said, the top cannot tilt them here despite uh the circumstances uh you know despite what is happening right now still have my eyes on the zach to initiate for them coach that elastic slingshot is going to be such a big key the fact that it's a non alt ability they can use it quite frequently to set up plays i don't think they're doing much to the team without space maker in the vicinity i have to agree i think zach is going to be their setup man here Although Scion has the ability to do it, I think Zach can do it a lot more frequently. Uh, and it's a lot easier as well. Scion ultimate a little bit easier to duck out of the way of. You never know when Zach's coming in over the walls. We see more trading coming in here in the mid lane. Uh, the pop-up there from Shogath not connecting with Heimer. Heimer still looking for that stun once again, and we see Poppy very low in the top side. Uh, as a nice root comes across there, and some good damage, good damage trade there in the bot lane from the Pioneers. Uh, you see three members of the Titans moving toward the Drake. As Cyan picked up the aggro off the tower, he's going to back up. Couldn't dive the tower like he wanted to to get the kill on the Poppy. Heimer good trading there against the Cho'Gath, but there's going to be no one to go after the Drake here, and it will get picked up for free by the Titans. Uh, however, at the moment, that is their entire gold advantage. No gold advantage here at six minutes. And, you know, let's talk about in game one, already a 3,000 gold advantage at this point. So, uh, Ethan, talk about the lack of a gold. Actually, I, I won't give it to you. Yeah, Sejuani coming just... in here. Sejuani coming in with a gank opportunity. Orn up there getting pinned down by two. So it's a 2v1 against the Orn. I think that the Sejuani will not be able to finish off the Zac. But this will be a death here for the Orn. It will go on to the Lux. Probably not exactly where they wanted it. But a kill lead and a gold lead now for the Pioneers. Yeah, the Pioneers struggle. Oh, you're not struggling. Excuse me. Uh, you, you're talking about game one. I was, I was going back to that. They definitely did struggle a lot more in game one. And game two, 
Looking pretty prosperous against this large tank composition. Uh, in chat, who's the challenger team? Illinois State. So this is Ellie, Illinois Wesleyan. Uh, not Illinois State. Not the big eye. Uh, it's, the, it's the big green eye, not the big orange eye. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're very much better. And you have to think that AM must be due in large part the composition. But being coach, they are just keeping it together, right? They are keeping their mental game. But as you see, Gank in late midnight, Rook will have to burn that flash to get out. Illinois Wesleyan has put themselves in a position great room there. They, they need to play perfectly, coach. They need to play perfectly to win with this uh, pretty meme heavy composition. Absolutely, they'll have to play perfectly. Uh, somebody in chat saying the Varus better be going Bork first item. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, he did, however, pick up Executioner's Calling. Not a bad choice. Getting rid of any type of healing uh, for a couple of seconds or getting rid of some of the healing for a couple of seconds. Uh, it's going to be huge. But yeah, Bork is going to have to be first. Uh, we talked about maybe seeing even like a Blood Razor uh, attack speed Sajwani. Uh, we talked about, heck, maybe Bork on the uh, the Heimer even. You know, anybody that could do percentage damage needs to be doing percentage damage right here. As you see Poppy with a great move there, getting the Cyan off the tower, letting the Demolish reset, keeping her tower standing up there in the top lane. And Flash dash in, Zack coming over the wall, and will be able to get away, at least momentarily, is the Varus. Very low is the Zack. I think his passive is still up though. Does that passive, so yeah. Yeah, even if they took him down, he would not have been down for long. But a bunch of damage going to force him to back, and they won't have to worry about the engage for the next couple uh, uh, of waves here, waiting for the Zac to come back. It's still a dead even gold game here. First Drake went the way of the Titans, but Wesley and holding on here. They do have a kill lead, but it's really the gold lead is what matters. Sejuani so looking like in. she might come mid, though. Sej looking like she might come in. She's kind of low, but she's going to come in. She has her ultimate available. She's going to get the Q off. Damage is going to come down. Stun comes across. Oh. And that will be, the, oh my god, the ultimate coming out of Cho'Gath there. Absolutely ate the Sejuani. And Heimer not going to fight in the minion wave. So misses a chance there to c get that kill. But a great uh, job there with the ultimate from Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath going down again. Uh, shield comes out from the barrier. So barrier has to be used. Ornhorn comes out though. Here we go. That's going to be the Lux most likely going down. No, Varus will take out the Mundo. Lux will live to fight another day, and another really close one has fallen the way of the pioneers. Uh, wow. Ethan, just what? What about that one? Uh, I, the aggression is coming through. It's not stop here, Coach. Once again, the mid lane, Elastic Slingshot, Midnight Rook cannot afford to breathe. Might have to slide this man my inhaler. <laughs> But scoops up a kill, tick, tick, minions, to finish it off. Um, that so, yeah, play right that there one. has typified the night, uh, right? We're very close in kills, one kill difference, non-stop action, and they're trying to get kills onto these tanks so they can build relevant items so they can really get going here, coach. We know tanks typically take a little bit longer to get online, and so they're trying to jumpstart that. So yeah, but, and here, but here's the thing though. It was a great engage from the Zac. We talked about the Zac gonna have to be the engage, but here's the problem. Heimer's still got a kill. Yeah. Absolutely. And as we look back at the by lane, Zac been all over, but Varus turning around here. He's gonna try to chase down the Orn. Orn was very low there. Sejuani gotta get away from Mundo though. Gotta, gotta use the Q, gotta get over the wall. Got to get over the wall. Didn't have the Q. I think the Q got interrupted there. Yeah. Mundo with a kill. Uh, is Zach going to come in here? He's going to get caught out on that control ward. See the bot lane for the Pioneers backing four items. Uh, so you see Bilgewater Cutlass there. So yeah, that, that's on track for the Bork. Um, as you see Lost Chapter and Blasting Wand on the Heimer. So AP Heimer there. Uh, we knew that was probably coming. It was a pipe dream. He's going, hey, Bork on Heimer. That was a pipe dream. That was never going to happen. Oh, uh, so and Drake is up once again. It will not be fought over. It's Earth, so they're in trouble. They can't let us get this. Get the Earth. It's over. It's over, man. I, Earth, it's Earth over. Soul. Uh, we hear the Bill Paxton impression coming out of Ethan there. Oh. Um, I don't know if uh, Ethan knows the Bill Paxton reference, but trust me, it was a Bill Paxton reference. Uh, as Heimer gets back to the mid lane here. Let's take a look, though. In the top lane, one kill for the Poppy, none for the Scion. One in the jungle for the Sejuani, two for the Mundo. One to one in the mid lane, one to one in the bot lane. 
two to two at the supports. So absolutely uh, even across the board here, only a 500 gold lead at 12 minutes. And you see a great snipe there on the route from the Lux. As the Lux followed that time on the Zac. Mundo going for Varus though. Varus gonna get the root. Varus gonna get the some help off of the uh the Lux ultimate, and they'll take down Mundo. They'll take down that challenger jungler and say, hey, what's going on? How's it going? Well, uh, we'll look good with some swag points here taking you down. And uh, that will get them a, a minor gold lead back again here. So we're back and forth, back and forth in this one. Ornhorn comes out. He will miss as he gets rooted. So the Zack was coming in thinking the Ornhorn was going to get a knockup. There will be the knockup there off of the dash. But, and there's a uh, teleport coming in from Poppy. Might be a three on two here in the bot lane. It looks like the uh, the Rift Herald went into the mid tower, did get brought down. Uh, but yeah, so t Poppy teleported bot lane, ended up not going anywhere. So that might be a problem. Scion might end up getting first tower for that. Knockup coming in from the Zach though. Varus will go down to the Orn as we saw Ultimate come out of Zach there. Uh, as the blue buff is passed over to Heimer in the mid lane. But problems there is the Poppy teleported bot lane did not get anything. Chances are that top lane tower might go down. Poppy going toward mid lane, but Shogath and Mundo there. That's yeah. a problem. Heimer's close enough. There's the airborne. I don't know. The slow's going to come across. Poppy does have flash. Might need to burn it. No. Able to walk away. Save the flash for another day. Scion still on top of that tower in the mid lane, though. Watch as out, you Coach. See Zach Mundo. coming up on the bot side. You see him pinging? Zach is looking for some action here. You might see a Zach's tower coming from action. Heimer gets knocked up under tower. Heimer going to have to look for the stun. Heimer will go down to wow. the ultimate from Cho. Going to have to run. Here is the poppy. One axe should do it. Flash comes out. There's the axe. Axe misses. Three members looking for the poppy. Sashwani comes up. Sharks Ooh. in the water! Can they find it? <laughs> there it is! Gets the save there. Orn v Varus. 1v1 here in the bot lane. Orn gets the root. He's going to use it to kite away from the Orn. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, they've got the root on the Cho'Gath, who's stuck under tower, taking tower shots. There's the stun coming in. I don't know if they're going to be able to catch up. Nope. Nah, maybe. Oh, there's the second stun. There it is. And there it is in the correct direction as Cho'Gath will go down to the Poppy. We talked about earlier, though. You have to stack the Sejuani passive first, save your ultimate to come in second. That way you can get both stuns. I lost video on Ethan. I don't know if I lost audio I'm as here. well. Can you hear me? Ethan is still here. We just lost yeah, video. I, I'm for bandwidth anyway. purposes, I took the video down. The voice more important at this part is Space Maker is right there going through. Not where they want to be, Coach. Going in alone on the Heimer. Heimer doing Whoa. a lot of Oh no! Orn 1v1 on the Varus. That's not what you want to see. Lux could actually win that fight though, if they choose to, but I don't think Lux wants to fight the Orn at the moment. But something we can't see, we cannot see the Varus 1v1. Uh, the Lux has to stay with the Varus as first tower will go to the Titans. Currently with a two and a half thousand gold lead. So the gold lead's starting to grow here for the Titans. But they do not have the farm lead they had in game one. If you look down the lanes, one CS difference in the top lane, 12 CS difference in the mid lane, and actually a, a farm lead for Carol in the bot lane. As I try to see anything well, up there. Yeah, no, I, I, you, you cut out for me one more time, Joe, just that. You know what, the game is just too heat. It's burning through my processor right now. Uh, but... I'm, I've got my eyes on this next dragon here, Coach. 14 seconds. As I said, if they get their hands on the soul, it's going to be absolutely over. Uh, just how it scales with your bonuses. You already have these extra bonuses. There's no way they're going to be able to eat through all of these health bars, Coach. There is not a chance. And they're pinging it. The, the pioneers are pinging it. So you know that they want it. They want to contest this one. They're not going to let this one go for free. And this might be our first big team fight. They don't have any vision, though. And Zack is going to go in there. Zack has his ultimate available. He gets rooted, though, by the Varus. Uh, Lux will go down. Zack will be able to get away. And I think that Drake will get picked up here. But fight here in the mid lane. Trying to get Heimerdinger out. Cyan is there. 
Uh, he will get the Heimer. And the Drake's still up, though. Bear is trying to fight 1v4 here in the bot lane. That's not going to end well for him. So it's a 0, it's a 3 0 here right now for the Titans. And they will pick up the Drake as well. Uh, and it is slowly but surely falling here as they take Ooh. it what a handily fight. after winning the team fight. Uh, but just not what the Pioneers needed. The Pioneers needed to come in with everybody. Uh, you can't go against four tanks with only half a team. So we're looking here in the mid lane without any without any minions. They're going to have to wait on that tower, but they want it. You can tell that they want it, as that tower is very close to falling. Poppy for the Pioneers has gone back up to the top lane, up to a 5,000 gold lead now, though, for the Titans. Uh, and you talked about it, Ethan, that Zach being the one who's going to have to jump around here. As they found Orn in the bot lane, there's going to be the stun from the Sejuani Ornhorn coming out. And he will die, so the knockup will not matter. So another kill onto the Varus. Very important there. You need to stack as much money on the Varus as possible. He does have full Bork completed. He's got the Executioner's Calling, a couple of daggers as well. So, you know, he's got the one item. Looking for the second item to truly come online, there is the Varus. Uh, you do have the full jungle item on the Sejuani, full jungle item on the Dr. Mundo as well. You see Abyssal Mask on the Orn, uh, an interesting item in this one. Uh, Spirit Visage on the Zac, Abyssal Mask on the Cho'Gath as well. So not only are the tanks tanks, but they're also building tanky even. I have a feeling... Okay, so Ethan uh, still having some uh, technical difficulties there with Ethan. Uh, I could not see the message from our producer here uh, as I am locked onto this screen for League of Legends. As we look, though, there's another great knockup by the Cho'Gath. The Cho'Gath getting kind of big. You can see getting bigger. Every time he uses the ultimate and eats somebody, gets a little bit taller there. Sejuani going in on to the Scion. Does not have enough damage. Trying to hold up for the Poppy, though, will get... Crowd control there will have to back up as we keep uh, looking. So uh, we see Varus though going in on the Orn here once again. We don't know. I don't know why he's going in one v one. Not a great choice. Flashes away from the Zach though. Great move to get away from the Zach. But I just don't think he could take the Orn in the one v one at the moment. Uh, farming good call going one v one into the Zach not so much. Varus backing, Lux backing, Heimer might be caught out here in the mid lane. Uh, Zach coming in behind him with that engage. No, Heimer will be able to back up in time. And there was also some vision there. And so Heimer able to know exactly what he was looking at. But three tanks mid. Mundo might be going a little bit favoring the bot side. Heimer able to get out of the way of that Zach uh, rubber band there. Uh, as a Rift Herald comes out though, and that will be the end of the mid lane tower. As there it goes. Uh, three members of the Pioneers here in the mid lane. Three members for the Titans as well and the Rift Herald. Rift Herald goes in and gets the majority of the tower. Fourth member of the Titans shows up. It's a 3v4. Varus trying to get there to make it a 4v4 in the mid lane. Let's see if any crowd control comes across. Let's see if anybody dives in on this one. No towers we're looking at here. Uh, as everybody was standing where the tier one tower for the pioneers used to be, but it will just be an opportunity for backing here. And it looks like a reset across most of the map as well. Uh, <laughs> Carol jungler, you know, as I'm laughing a little bit at uh, what's going through in the chat. Um, they're calling for the gun blade on the Varus. I don't know if they're going to find it. Uh, I don't know if they're going to find the Gunblade on the Varus in this one. Heimerdinger, though, picking up the Void Staff. So, going for a little bit of that penetration there. As you see, the Tier 2 Tower does fall. Cho'Gath takes it down solo in the mid lane. A little bit more cash going on to the Cho. Uh, you see Mundo with four kills. Currently the kill leader for the Titans. Three kills on the Varus makes him the kill leader for the Pioneers. Cho sitting out here. Uh, I mean, he's going to take a lot of damage. Not going to go uh, below two-thirds health, though. But a lot of damage came out onto the Cho'Gath. 
who now has Adaptive Helm in addition to Abyssal Mask, so a lot of MR there for the Cho'Gath. You see Warmogs on the Mundo, and you see Abyssal Mask and Sunfire Cape on the Scion in the top lane. Fourth Drake coming up. Four here in the bush trying to cheese the Sejuani. The rest of the team, though, trying to come in here. They get the stun onto the Lux. I think Lux will go down quickly. She does. Varus goes down as well. It is a 3v5 here in the rest of this team fight, that means. And I just don't think they have the damage. Heimer going to go down. Sejuani being chased away by the Cho'Gath. And there is the Devourer taking her down. Poppy, the only one to survive. And it's now a 7,000, about to be an 8,000 gold lead here for the Titans, and they will have Drake as well, which is just dirty on a team full of tanks. Uh, Ethan, are you back yet? That's going to be a no. All right. All right. We're, we're trying to get Ethan back here. Uh, having some problems, but we will have him back hopefully soon. Um, uh, Coach, can you hear yes, me? Yes, Ethan, I can hear you. Oh, it's good to be back. I've been yelling at my screen. Oh. All right, so jungle, uh, jungle camps being picked up here. Ethan, have you been following along with the game here? Quite the game. I, I, Quite the game. I'm assuming you can hear me. I can hear you. I now. can hear you, yes. So you've been following along here. Tell us what you think of the game so far. Nothing. Okay, we'll try to go back to Ethan in a minute. Uh, you see here Orn, using Ethan's word, finally starting to hang some ornaments uh, on himself. He's got the Infernal Mask instead of the Abyssal Mask. And he has the upgraded Sunfire Cape, which is the Forge Fire Cape. So... Uh, producer laughing in my ears. We're trying to get Ethan possibly back on the stream sometime before July. So here we go. Uh, and Carol really back down to the, the end of their rope here. As Cho'Gath going to go in, he is getting massive right now. Uh, you can actually see how fed Cho'Gath is by how fed he is. He just gets bigger. Uh, the only thing that makes him bigger at this point would be the Gargoyle Stone Plate, which would be fun to see on that Cho'Gath right now. So looking in here, we have Orn into Poppy. We were expecting this to be the top lane matchup, but at the moment they're just fighting over the tier two tower in the bot lane. Uh, that's actually a really good fight, Orn and Poppy. So maybe uh, maybe we can see something here as they try to trade here in the bot lane. In the top side jungle, however, uh, Zach going in, but there's too many members there and they're just gonna back off. They're protecting the Baron play. Uh, uncontested currently, the, the Baron is, but here comes four members. They might try to get in there. 3,000, 2,900, 2,400. Maybe a Lux ultimate for the steal. Nope, Cho'Gath will eat the Baron. And Sejuani went in. Sejuani will get taken down. Zach going to come over the wall. Damage going to come over the wall from the Scion. They're going to get the Heimer. They're going to get the Varus. Lux running for her life. Poppy and Orn still just hanging out in the bot lane. Scion goes in, gets the flash out of the Lux. And I think that will just be a push mid lane here for Illinois Wesley. As Poppy, though, gets the stun on to the Orn into the wall there, trading some damage back, gets up, picks up the shield, does Poppy. But Orn, so tanky right now with the Elemental Earth uh, Soul. Uh, it's going to be hard for Poppy to 1v1 him. Meanwhile, Mundo not having any trouble 1v1ing the Lux as he goes under tower there. I think he will die, though, to the Sejuani. Yep, that's going to happen. However, Scion took out the mid tower. He's going to take out the mid inhibitor as well. Poppy going in, though, gets the stun onto the Orn, not letting him leave lane. Scion going to have to ultimate to get out of that one. And uh, Poppy, finally, the Orn will get away from that Poppy there. Poppy just harassing the Orn. And it looks like Orn's going to TP right back, though. Uh, and what did Orn do? Uh, Orn picking up the adapt adaptive helmet, looks like. Uh, and refilling his potions. Cyan picking up Frozen Mallet, haunting guys on the Lux. So, uh, yeah, we're just gonna see what's what's cracking here. 
Uh, Lux does hit a root on the Cho, but he's so big right now, he does not really care. Tier 2 tower in the bot lane goes down as well. Um, just pronounced Pi Swag. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen2020, for giving me the proper pronunciation there. Pi Swag, not Psywag. I thought it was a Psyduck joke from Pokemon. As we watch Cho'Gath get taken down by the entirety of the Pioneers team. Big kill there onto the Cho'Gath. Bounty went to Poppy as they try to clean up the double siege minions here in the bot lane. Uh, you see Poppy picked up Spectre's Cal sign with the Infernal Mask upgrade from the Orn. Winsus going on to the Varus. So you saw Zack jump the wall there. Zack would be in a little bit of trouble. Fighting here for this bot tower. Gonna have to back up are the Pioneers. The tower will go down. They need to fight under a tower. They can't really fight without one. A lot of roots coming in from the Lux. Crowd control being on the menu here for the Pioneers all day. Second inhibitor goes down. Minion wave crashing onto the top tower. So we will most likely see the third base tower go down. Three, two, one. There it goes. Lux ulti comes out though. Doesn't get enough damage for a kill. See everybody there gets knocked up there on that great Zack Elastic. Uh, two kills there as Lux and Sejuani both go down. Varus trying to get out. He will survive. He will get a turnaround kill on the Scion, but the third in him goes down as well. And Poppy gonna go in, knock him off the tower. Scion was trying to do as much damage as possible in his rage form. Uh, <laughs> Ethan in the Twitch chat telling me his internet is gone, but we still here. Uh, hopefully him saying killing it coach means I'm doing well and not that he wants to kill me. Uh, I I'm hoping. I'm hoping. We don't know. Uh, so we see the Cho'Gath hanging out in base. Uh, it looks like he's dancing in the front of the base there, just kind of hanging out. Uh, looks like Poppy's standing next to him dancing as well. Uh, the rest of the team moving forward and they, yeah, I don't think they're actually going to go in. I just think we're going to have a dance-off. I think this might be like the end of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, we might just have a dance-off here. Maybe uh, we'll get a visit from Star-Lord, and uh, he'll come in and with the uh, with the Power Stone and do some work here, and maybe turn it around for Carol. Otherwise, the, uh, the dance-off just going to keep happening here. Uh, as jokes coming across, as Poppy asked them for the forfeit, and Cho'Gath telling her that they tried, but weren't unable to. Elder Drake comes across. Cho'Gath no longer dancing. Uh, with the Elder Drake, uh, this could be some very quick deaths here for the Pioneers if they're not careful. Uh, Cho'Gath is massive right now, looking for the Poppy and not attacking the Poppy. In fact, nobody's attacking here. Uh, we're seeing backs, and there it is. Finally, an attack onto the Poppy. Everybody stopped and attacked her at the same time. She disappeared in a matter of heartbeat. Zack coming in as well. A uh, big dive on these last two towers. Lux goes down. You see damage coming in on the Zack. Zack will go down. He did have his passive though, so he should come back up. Heimerdinger went down there. Trying to get back onto the pad was Sejuani. Varus will get a kill onto the Cho'Gath. I think the kill actually went to the fountain, but the last person to touch them was the Varus. One of the Nexus Towers will go down as Sejuani and Varus still up here. Varus trying to do damage, going to get dove on by the Zack. Ornhorn comes out. That will be it for the Varus. That will be it for the second Nexus Tower. Sejuani will sit on pad as members of the Titans will allow the Super Minions to take the Nexus as they will just sit on pad and watch Sejuani. So that will do it for match number one here, Illinois Wesleyan. Some interesting picks in game one, and some even some even more interesting picks here in game number two. So as we have 55 people at the end of that one watching, if you're one of the everything we have going here on NECC underscore esports on twitch.tv. Or if you're watching us on ESTV, thank you for watching us there as well. But definitely, if you're on Twitch, throw us a follow. Uh, you know, maybe a subscription. If you know, if you can subscribe here. I don't know. I'm asking my producer, can they subscribe? 
Not on Twitch, not yet, but definitely throw us a follow. If you throw us a follow, we'll eventually get to the point where you can subscribe. You'll be notified about everything going on with NECC Esports on Twitch. Um, still waiting for Ethan to come back, having some internet issues there. I guess I should turn away from the screen I've been watching stuff on, go back to the camera, that way you guys can see me. Uh, it was a, an interesting match, to say the least. Illinois Wesleyan, a great team. Uh, Carol, you know, you got to play the big boys eventually. Uh, you know, they've probably been looking at that one on their schedule. They knew it was coming. Uh, and, you know, you just got to step up and play it. That's all you can do. All you can do is step up and play the game. Um, so, you know, credit to them. They played it out there. Uh, you know, they were magnanimous in their defeat. Uh, you know, you saw a little bit of uh, the dance-off going there in the base. Uh, they knew what the score was. You know, they weren't uh, they weren't upset. Nobody tilted. Uh, so, I mean, an interesting ending to a League of Legends match, but uh, nobody was upset. So, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully it stays that way. Hopefully, it stays with the with nobody upset there. But not a lot to talk about. It was a it was an er interesting game early, but as soon as all those tanks got to the mid game, it just became impossible for the pioneers to burst them down. Uh, the team fights just took too long. And the, the damage eventually came through, and their engage from the Zac was really telling their the knockup on the Zac, the knockup on the Orn, the knockup on the Cho'Gath, the knockup on the Scion, just bought them all the time they needed to get into position to sit on top of the Pioneers and pound them down with all of the beef that they brought to the fight. Uh, I'm going to take a quick ask to my producer if we're going to take a break here between matches. He's going to give me the up or down here. Oh, I All right, so it looks like we will be taking a quick break here between matches. We will be back uh, broadcasting in 19 minutes. Uh, so look for that second match coming up here in about 19 minutes. It will be Howard Community College Team Gold versus, wait for it, Howard Community College Team Maroon. So some Civil War action here, as it will be brother against brother watching Howard take on Howard. Two teams out of the Challengers division going to be our match two tonight so come make sure you come on back 18 19 minutes plenty of time go get yourself some popcorn something to drink come on back and we'll have match number two of the night here on the on necc underscore esports on twitch tv and on es tv until then i'm jim Lowry, and for ethan dolan who's trying to rejoin us we'll be right back
out, boarding pass. Couldn't catch me, I'd be moving fast. Call me a shooting star. Let them know who you are. Flying up and above. Wish on a star. Time to show them who's in charge. Call me a shooting star. Shooting star, got more than a couple of people going mad. I swear they're rooting hard. Tell them I'd be big in a game like she went and got them breast implants. I said I'm moving too fast, didn't even get a glance. I'm ready to eat up trap like I'm seated in a restaurant. If you had swag like mine, you know it's best to flaunt. We on, hating because you want, shining like it's neon, rock like kings of neon. Shooting stars across the galaxy.
And welcome back to our coverage of the NECC. I am back. I'm alive. My Wi-Fi cut out. Shout out to Comcast, by the way. Don't they're not they don't sponsor. No, there's no real shout out there. Uh, we just saw a pretty um uh, coach. How'd you describe that game? That series. I played the fifth. <laughs> no, it was uh, it was an overall dominating performance from Illinois Wesleyan. Uh, going into the game, you're looking at a 5-0 and team against the 0-5 team. Uh, there's a reason Wesleyan's 5-0. and There's a reason uh, they think that they're the favorite to win the Champions Division. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's a huge, huge uh, look at it there. And, you know, Carroll 0-5, they've had a rough road here. Uh, I think they're a good team. You look at them, they play well. They play well together. I think they're a good team. I think I just think the champions division is a really good division. NECC got some great teams up there, and they've just you know haven't hit anybody that they could get in front of yet. Yeah, uh, I absolutely one hundred percent agree. Our second match of the night here. Oh, is I need to move to spectate. Uh, it was said multiple times, and my producer did say it in my ear, and it just didn't click. Um, uh, our second match of the night is an interesting one. Here we do have. Two teams from the same school. Coach, just want to pull it up, make sure you get the colors right. We've got the Howard Maroon Dragons going up against the Howard Gold Dragons. Maroon is 3 0 on the air. Gold is 2 and 2 on the year. The gold team will be on the left hand side, I believe. No, the right hand side. Yes. Yes. I, I believe. Uh, no, no. Gold's on the left. Gold's on the left. Maroon's on the right. That is that is it, right there. Uh, I have some I have some insight on these ones. Uh, last week, I believe we did two Champions League matches last week. Correct? Uh, I believe. Yep. Yeah, you are correct. So, uh, so I've actually got some because the Upper Iowa Peacocks have played both these teams from Howard, uh, and they're they're good teams. Um, we did beat their gold team, uh, and we did lose to their maroon team. Uh, but they're both really good teams, and we want to play the maroon team again. I'll be honest. We uh we want to play them again. We thought that was a really great game, uh, especially game two in that and our our match against them. Uh, but I really like their coach, Coach Winkle. Uh, great guy. Yes, Mar Maroon is on the left. M Matete <laughs> is is there? I just pulled up their roster, and someone did put it in chat as well. Thank you, Howard DC Dragons. I just found the Discord message from a producer earlier today having the rosters. Maroon on the left, gold on the right. Coach, continue with your analysis. <laughs> But uh, their, their coach is a great guy. Uh, he's putting together a good program there. He wanted me to make sure to tell you, Ethan, so we could talk about it. All 10 members on the team, so both five on maroon, five on gold, are all freshmen. Wow, what a they're, young program. Something they're that's all freshmen. He, he wanted that to be, to be on stream. He wanted people to know, young team. Uh, and this is what they've got to work with. Uh, and so, but he's, he's excited about it. Um, and he's talking about how they got two diamond players. The diamond players are on separate teams. Everybody else is basically gold. Uh, but this is, I mean, it's a community college in Maryland. Uh, first ever community college in Maryland with an esports program. So they're really proud to be participating. Um, and they're just, they're, they're here to have a good time. And they're, they're good teams. As you said, two and two. Yeah. I think you said Maroon was three and oh, three four and oh. So yeah, they're both, they're both on pace there. Uh, this should be uh, a really good match. Uh, Coach Winkle was talking about that they scrim each other every week. They have inner inner squad scrims every week. These teams have played each other a bunch. So we're going to have two teams who know what the other team is going to do. They're going to have all of the information about what's going to be going on. So it should be a really good match. I got to say, talk, you talk about the history. It's the first uh, community college in Maryland to have an esports program and I mean, just looking at the ranks of it, one that is doing well for themselves. I mean, even just having a mass of your players at gold is very, very impressive, peaking with some diamonds. This is one for the vaults, Coach. This is one for the history books. This is one that you file away. I think they'll be talking about this exact game for a while. Hey, you remember, you remember when we faced off? You remember when both our teams got, got to duke it out 
in conference play. Uh, I'm very, very excited. As you said, they've played up so many times. The picks and bands, I think, are going to be very telling of that. You know, there's going to be some very targeted things coming through. Uh, I, I'm just excited. It's this, this feels like a big moment for the program, for this conference even. Uh, just, just a big collegiate esports moment on this scale. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, it's not every day you get to see two teams going against each other. Although I think uh, Eleanor Wesleyan's academy team is in the champion side as well, right? They had to drop out. My apologies. My apologies. Our producer tells me that uh, Eleanor Wesleyan's academy team dropped out due to COVID. I was actually looking forward to that one to see Eleanor Wesleyan yeah. going against themselves. But we will get it. I, I called it out uh, at the end of the first uh, part of the broadcast. The Civil War here, brother versus brother, coming out of Howard Community College. Uh, the Dragons, I believe. The Dragons Dragon. of Howard Community College. So uh, it will be fun. Uh, Tanoy, I see you there. We'll talk about that later. Uh, so Tanoy dropping in chat. I mentioned we'd love to scrim them, and Tanoy in chat said, we'll scrim you. Oh, yeah. So uh, I did get a message from Coach Winkle here. He says they're good to go if we're good to go. I don't know if you guys got that one. I think Winkle might have sent that one straight to me. I'm a, I can drop an R in chat. I, I think we're all good, yeah. Um, yeah. As you said, I mean, uh, off stream, we're talking. You're a big Star Wars guy, uh, bringing that, bringing that Duel of the Fates music right now. Oh, man, I wish we could get. I, I wish we could get some John Williams going here. Uh, wish we had some John Williams cooking. Oh man! All right, so they went in. They're into the pick bands here, Ethan. Uh, do you think it's going to be as interesting as our first match of the day? Ah, uh, <laughs> no. Nothing will top that. If you don't know what we're talking about, go watch the clips of the picks and bands. Not the gameplay. The picks and bands. Hey, right? the gameplay was pretty good, too. The gameplay was pretty yeah. good, too. Yeah. Five yeah. tanks yeah. came across for Eleanor Wesley in, in game number two. And they got the soul. And they got the elemental oh, earth soul Tamir as well. Orr could be banned off the bat here, coach. As we said, a lot of targeted bands coming through. This is probably the matchup all season long that have the most impactful bands because, as you said, these two have scrimmed so often. But how will they perform when the lights are finally on? That is a good question. I'm a little bit worried here. You had some internet problems in game number one, and my client is getting buggy here. I'm getting nervous. My client's getting buggy. Uh, luckily, I'm running my Discord off a separate computer, so... Even if my client drops, I will still be here. But yeah, no, knowing exactly who your opponent might play, and you could pick somebody, you could ban them out. Five bans against any one person, even pro players, five bans against you is rough. So if either team decides they just want to totally ban out a player, they can. And yeah. they could basically play four and a half V5 there. Because very few people at the collegiate level are that good on six champions. Very few. Ezreal coming through, and we're going to see ADC selected on the other side. They are in LCS order, but uh, they're confident in the pools as neither team, both teams, excuse me, decided to forego the pro draft. So we're going to see that come out here. Matete and TH picking it up. Karthus, coach, familiar face. Familiar face there. He, that will most likely be a Karthus jungle, not a Karthus ADC, though. Uh, they do not actually have to pick in LCS order. Remember, they can trade because they they didn't pro draft, so they can pick ah, out of order. Then yes, trade. Yes. They can trade back to LCS order at the end, uh, because I'm assuming Yumi is not going to be the jungler because playing Yumi anywhere except support is basically as troll as troll gets. Somebody in the chat might tell me I'm wrong. However, I think, no, I think they have to go LCS order no matter what. So they can trade the champion. I'm pretty sure they don't. Really? They have to. The the players have to be in, in LCS order. Yeah, yeah no, that, the, that that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. They have to have the champions to swap. Yeah, yeah. So coming out. Yeah. Just, yeah. My uh, apologies. My apologies. <laughs> I good, thought you meant good. they were picking. I'm like, there's you're no way that's a man. <laughs> I'm looking like Vayne Ezreal top. I don't think so. Uh, Internet. I don't think so. <laughs> internet not only not not oh I can't even talk now. The internet issue is not the Ethan, only. You're breaking up. Can you hear me? Today. Can you hear me? Ethan, he's breaking up again. <laughs> Where's the inhaler? All Someone right. give me the inhaler. Right. You know, maybe that's uh, the issue. I'm a little lightheaded. There's too much air in my head now. <laughs> as we are into our second round of bands, our TF and Zoe Whoa. picked up in the mid lane. Oh my god, fun night! It's been a fun night. Too much fun. Too, much, too fun. much fun. What are you going to do without me next week? Uh, 
Not what I'm about to do right now, Coach, because I'm about to take a bite of ice cream. Mm. And, wow, that <laughs> hits. That that hits right there. I'll tell you what right now. Coach told you to get snacks in the intermission. I listened, okay? I listened right here. Look at this. I listened. If you are sitting snackless right now, the only person to blame is yourself. As we do see another familiar face choke out to run it out here, Coach. All right, we so, saw uh, Lulu, Shen, Hecarim, and Camille are the last four bands. Chogath picked up uh, on the red side. We're going to get two picks in a row here. Uh, Darius hovered. There he Darius is. locked in. That's that's what we haven't seen today. New uh, players, and especially on the tank as well. Very surprising. Um, I like this composition being put together here by the maroon side. Um. They have a very nice scaling comp that they're going to round out with the cane. Yumi Ezreal, the missile silo in the bot lane, does so, so well into the late game. Darius, the monster in the late game. Zoe, so much damage come late game. I really like what they're doing, coach. Uh, and I think we're waiting for the gold side. I think we're waiting on their support. Although there's a couple of flexible picks there, but that will be the support coming in on the Leona. Vayne Leona, I like Vayne Leona into Ezreal Yumi. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah. Personally, as a support main, I love to see Yumi on the opposite side. Uh, a lot of people disagree with me on that one. Uh, she has been getting a little bit stronger here. I personally love to see Yumi on the opposite side because as a support, it means I only have to target one person. I don't have to worry about keeping track of two people. I can focus all my energy on one person. And Leona, Leona is great at locking down one target. Her ultimate can get multiple but her E and her Q can get one. And if she can get two stuns and a root on that Ezreal, I think Vayne is going to have a field day down there in the bot lane. I think you could be absolutely correct in that. You hit very early on what I was saying. All right, this Leona Vayne is a bot lane that's really looking to go in. If you hit that Zenith play, bada bing, bada boom, you're trying to get all of that damage in. You only have to hit one person with a Zenith blade to jump to it. The Ezreal, Yumi, they could be in trouble early game. However, if they do weather that storm, Coach, I could see it being very, very prosperous for them late game. Uh, and we talked about how their whole team is pretty geared towards the late game. But uh, same could be said for the gold team, right? Vayne is so strong once he gets some items on. And the Cho'Gath and Karthus are both going to scale infinite. So both these teams definitely playing to win this one late. Well, and... Looking at it, don't forget about Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate's ultimate can move him around the map wherever he needs to be. Uh, I believe American Express had that motto back in the day. American Express, everywhere you want to be. Everywhere you want to be. So I believe I might be... Uh, hey, American Express, was... send the check, send the check. <laughs> yes. And uh, one of my, one of my, one of my uh, favorite ways of calling that one out, just by calling it, it's like, oh, oh, look, American Express right there. Uh, so once again, yeah, American Express, we'll, we'll do this all night for you if you want us to. Uh, speaking of, uh, if you're one of the 33 people watching right now, go ahead and drop that follow. Uh, as I got Ethan laughing again here. Uh, so we got to wait for him to stop laughing so he can get back uh, back on the stream talking here. But no, I think Carthus in the jungle. We talked about it uh, before we thought he, before he went ABC and we were in the first match looking at the jungle. Uh, Carthus jungle scaling so well. Uh, he snowballs through the jungle. If he gets a couple of good ganks, the Requiem going to come through at the end. You know, once he gets the death cap, maybe a Ludens, maybe a Morellos, all of a sudden you got a team taking a lot of damage every big team fight. And we've talked about that Karthus is even still deadly once he himself dies. Uh, I've actually seen Karthus's pick up Pentas after they've been killed. Yeah, uh, definitely something that you keep your eyes on. It's just. One more thing uh, you toss an enemy's way, right? You're saying, okay, I've got to keep track of this, that, that, and as well. Karthus is dead, but don't forget about it in the back end of the team fight. I, I I just love both of these teams, Coach. One thing that I am, my eyes are drawn towards, we kind of talked about a lot of the other matchups. What do you think about this mid lane matchup? You talked briefly about that Twisted Fate's ability to be everywhere at once, but actually in lane, TF going up against Zoe... Uh, two mages in my mind, in my mind that are kind of hard to define. Uh, I, Zoe is a burst mage, right? But I mean, there's elements of control in the kit. Same can be said about TF. There's a lot going on for both of them. How do you think this boils down in lane? I think it comes down to the build for Twisted Fate. There's a couple of different ways of building Twisted Fate. You can play him as the burst, but uh, more so last season than this season, you can play on hit Twisted Fate. 
You can play attack speed twisted fate. It works. He basically becomes a marksman. Uh, so it really depends on how you want to build him. You can play him one of two ways. Uh, either way it goes, though, as long as you can dodge Zoe's abilities, Zoe is a very, very fragile champion. Uh, she takes a lot of damage from everybody. Uh, that's why she moves around a lot. That's why she can pick up the summoner spells and use extra summoner spells. But if you can dodge what she's got and put some damage on her, she's going to have to back up quickly and repeatedly. Uh, versatility. Um, very excited for that come through. I, I, I don't know if this middle is going to shake. I mean, it's interesting. Summoners here team will be running it out with that teleport coach, giving a little bit of extra mobility to teleports. In fact, on the side, no ports coming out for the rune team. Uh, that Darius top lane played by Matete opting for a very aggressive, pretty typical dis flash. Ignite. I prefer the flash or the ignite ghost to run. Down. Uh, do you see that advantage coming through throughout the course of the game with the teleports? Absolutely, especially on the top lane. Uh, I told my top laners, play teleport. And they say, but what about Ignite? And I say, play teleport. And they said, how about on this champion, coach? And I go, play teleport. Uh, and, you know, they're very, very limited op opportunities where Ignite's going to be the better play. Because even if you get your kill with the Ignite, they're going to teleport back to lane. They're not going to miss any farm. Whereas if you burn that Ignite and you don't get the kill, they come back to lane for free. And then you're just down in lane. Uh, so if you get it with the ignite, maybe a little bit, but if you don't get the ignite kill, then you're just behind in lane. So that's that's where I'm looking at it. And then the TF uh, having the teleport just means when he alts somewhere, he can get back to lane. So at absolutely. level six, you can expect an absolute roam from the TF at level six. If he doesn't roam at level six, I'm not going to say he's playing it wrong, but I would I would encourage him to roam at level six. All right, you all pause in five seconds, coach. I am paused at five seconds, Ethan. All right, let's get into five, four, three, two, one. Go! We are here. Match number two of the night. The Maroon Dragons handling from Howard coming out on the blue side with Matete, Orca, Amonk, Tanoi, and Flex on them. And for the Gold Dragons coming out on the red side, TH the top lane, Tenoy in the jungle, Tragedy rank Notorious, and Quonk rounding out the squad. Level one action here, five man on the top side by the Gold team. Coach, what do you think about early game strategies here? Just because these two played against each other so much, you're gonna know a lot of early game tendencies. How do you even approach this as they might approach this Darius here? I think they're gonna go. Oh, they saw him. He 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 showed himself. They saw him here. There's gonna be the root. There's gonna be the knockout. This is gonna be a lot of damage coming in. That might. There you have it. Sorry for taking your thunder there, Ethan. I'm I'm so sorry about that. One. I got excited. That went exactly the way Gold wanted it to go. They stacked it onto the Karthus. The snowball begins now. Absolutely, the snowball begins there and. Ironic, right? We're talking about the early strategy. They catch out the top laner. Uh, they must have had an inkling, right? That must be a spot where Matei, they, they just like to five man. And if you understand that they're going to be five manning, you can catch them out here. Holding on the top side buffs now. Also, to no way going to the bottom side buffs. So they're going. They're going to get a little start here in the jungle overall. Interesting to see. Kind of keep your eyes on whether or not that holds any bearing there into the late game. You see that Ezreal Yu kind of harassing there, moving down to the bot side right now as we are heading to an early game. And man, how annoying is the poke playing against that bot lane there, coach, with the, with the Ezreal and the Yu together? That that missile silo, as I like to say, both characters having so much range. Uh, well, you know, to, to quote a pretty decent movie, if you could dodge a wrench, you can dodge an Ezreal Q. So, uh, just gotta dodge. You gotta get out of the way. Vayne has a Q. Uh, let's be honest, Leona doesn't dodge, but she has the extra extra uh, shielding she can put up. And you just gotta survive. You have to survive, and you have to make him pay for it. And at the moment, Gold is not making Maroon pay for that Ezreal Yumi combo. Um, Absolutely. Not at all. But they they got eyes on the cane. Yeah. You might have some action in the bottom river here. Whoa, they're gonna better. Move up. Move secure. Notorious has to flash away. Exhaust is dropped. Quag not going anywhere. 
Old Thunder Flash will still die. Amok picks up a kill in the mid lane. Tragedy rank going down. So Maroon getting the best of that first engage. The 2v1 Matete in the top lane. A little bit of damage to you. Did not connect that grab there. What did you see from that first team fight, Coach? The recognition of the bot lane sort of moving up to blue buff. The, the problem there had to be that the bot lane got pinched for, for gold. They went up to challenge uh, the the cane. TF couldn't get there. He got stuck by the Zoe. So then when the bot lane, oh, here we come from the bot yeah. lane, the, the Karthus comes up out of the river. The gank getting notorious, trying to maneuver around, going very low. Tenoff playing this very well. Flex out him as well, popping off. 2v3 situation. They're gonna pick up one. There is the second double kill for the Ezreal. Quamp gonna just, it's not worth their time, but they give two more kills the way of that Ezreal. That's gonna be a big payday back at the base. You see, and that's and that's kind of what we're talking about here is that they, you know, they went in, they didn't have numbers going into the jungle, as we see a sleep here in the mid lane is TF. Uh, he will survive that though. Uh, but they didn't have the numbers going into the jungle. They got pinched and then they, they couldn't go anywhere. They had nowhere to go. Uh, and then Twisted Fate died trying to get to them. And then in the bot lane there, Karthus came in. He needed to wait about four seconds. If he waits about four seconds to come in, Leona's going to be there. Leona's going to drop all the crowd control. And that fight goes very differently. Exactly. So it goes very, very differently if they're a little more patient. TH getting on the backside there will have to burn the flash. Karthus on the bot side of the river there getting that scuttle crab all tied up. A lot of action early on. Five kills in four minutes, coach. These two, as we said, had a lot of practice against each other, and it's not result I thought it would. You figured when you play someone a lot, it's going to result in a lot more slower calculated games, but both sides have come out swinging. Quant going into the play there, trying to drop the CC. Tanoi going to sustain some damage here in the mid lane. Tanoi V2 ganking. Man, that's tough. They have the same name. Tanoi and Tanoi V2. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that is a little tough. That is, but what if we just call Tanoi V2 just V2? Just call him V2. All right. We'll, we'll, like know. we'll, like we'll know. Uh, I'm going to ask you, do you have any siblings? I am indeed the youngest of three is Quan coincidentally gonna look like the youngest of three they're going down little brother with the little tyke who getting dunked on oh notorious trailing away Yumi gonna connect the queue there probably not long for this world trying to micro Tanoi gonna pick it up coach youngest of three so you know you've got brothers do you ever uh, you ever fight with your brothers oh yeah. Was it a long, drawn-out fight, or did you go for the eyes immediately when you fight with your brothers? I mean... You know, I was kind of slow, so it's going to be long, drawn-out no matter what. You know, I was a, I was a, I was a, I was a big bowling ball for kids. All right, I tell you. That max speed, you know, that, that truck doesn't get 100 right away. I tell you, I, I'm looking at this, you know, they've played against each other so often. that yeah, no, I'm not looking for a long, drawn-out game here. No, I want to play, I want to play you now, I want to go at you now. It's a kind of a dive comp there in the bottom lane of four gold. So th that's their comp. They got to dive in. They can't now. Ezreal's got, what, five kills now? Four kills? Yeah. Right, they can't dive him now, but early game, diving is how they were going to win this one. So they had to dive in. It's just unfortunate it never worked. Yeah, fortunately, it's just working deep. This is getting gone in here. Matete trying to get something done. Bleed is dropping. Oh, there he's the dunk getting it done on the top side. The lead will grow seven kills to one. About a 2K gold lead right now. The only place you can really say they're winning is in the mid lane. TF does have a 6 CS lead right there. Tragedy getting it done against a monk, but they are going to need some more help down the street coach if they get the win in this game remember tf might have the cs lead but zoe does have the kill so i think the edge in that lane still does go toward the zoe absolutely good photos out i completely forgot about their scrap earlier on do some clearing the jungle yeah and is tanoi just there's gonna be walking at will here at them oh yeah absolutely, absolutely. with the with the sustain on the yumi with the exhaust on the yumi to exhaust the vein when she comes in uh, Tanoi and Flex on them just going to be able to walk straight at them every time they want to. And there's not a lot right now Quonk and Notorious can do. Uh, yeah, not a lot of need is. The Monk's going to connect that team coming through. 
Uh, it, it's just a really a waiting game uh, for Golden Seeds. They have to wait until they can find the correct opportunity with them. Numbers of Avengers. Dawson's dropping story is going somewhat low. Zealand played coming through. Quan retreating. But will be able to get the Bane out alive. And that was the goal of the mission. Matete going to clear out some vision. Probably set up for Rift Hill here. But they're honest, the pain out the drug. So. Watson made the double start starving out resources. This is a. This is a pretty ruthless play here. They're not going to find the Krugs, but just the thought to say, hey, I'm ahead. Let's go see if the Krugs are home. Uh, blow down their house a little bit. Take some resources out of the jungles. We do see some action on the side. Karthus rotating down. I think that is where our next fight will occur. Yep, Karthus coming in, takes the blast cone over. Walk going very, very low. Wall is dropped and away coming through. Then other, other two have to pop out. V2 come through. Excuse me. Oh my gosh, the ulti can't stay live for much longer. Flex, I'm not going to be able to go anywhere. The 2v3 situation, they do end up trading two kills for two kills. And there we go. We talked about the TF being able to come in there. And uh, TF went in, and then he, he looks like he's gonna, he doesn't have his TP. He's going to have to walk back to lane as we see the Rift Herald in the top lane. Uh, as that's gonna go poorly there for Cho'Gath. Oh! Oh, maybe not! Maybe not! What are we doing under tower? The cars is also coming through! Oh my goodness! TH holding on and you needed something to swing the tides in your favor. That is a definite start right there. Wow! TH holding up under tower? Sticking around gets a little bit farming. That's a great play under tower by TH. Tremendous play. And then Karthus, you know, saving the ultimate till the perfect time. Ooh, jank hitbox there on that damage on that vein. But saving the hitbox till the, uh, saving the, the Requiem till the perfect time. Gets the cane. Picks up two kills there. They drop it down. It's under a 2,000 gold lead now. Uh, but no, just going back to that fight in the bot lane. They have to be super careful. And I'm still waiting, and I really, I'm going to say it, and I, I don't like going there. I don't like the itemization on Quonk right now. He went Swifties super early, and he is getting poked out. His speed is not what is getting him in trouble right now. It's the fact that he doesn't have, oh, and we see a TF down here again. The final chapter coming through, but 2v3, they're looking to win this. All D coming through. First down to Tori's into the block. Flips out a pitch it up. Tragedy. Trying to run, will escape, but the 2v3 proving too strong. JJ trying to fight Denoy here to excuse me, does get the pull off, drops the Ignite, dropping some more damage. The dunk comes through, tick, tick, boom. Here on the to win, mistake takes him out. Not sure what V2 was thinking, sitting down in the top lane all alone like that. I, I think he was thinking he was going to drop a lot of damage there in a short amount of time, and I think he missed a couple of those cues. Uh, but going back to what happened in the bot lane, uh, you're looking at a Leona that has no armor and no magic resist. They bought Swifties. Swifties early and then a Sapphire Crystal, and now they've got a Control Ward. I'm seeing no extra defenses on the Leona, and she is a dive support. She is meant to be down there to dive in on them and to tank all of that damage for Vayne, so Vayne can just go in and deal free damage. And if she can't go in and tank, Leona is not doing what she is supposed to be doing. I've been using a cleanse there off the spell book. That was some pretty slick play. Nothing comes of it. Orca trying to set up a dive here, but look who is there. Tanoi popping through. There is one. Tanoi picks up the kill. Yumi trying to get out flexing them. Bop and block won't get back up in time. Ezreal has to run. 2v2 situation. Kano does stay alive. Gotta give it to Orca right there, getting his ultimate off while he was getting uh, just absolutely burned down. Uh, and there's a nice solo kill in the mid lane by TF. But Orca being able to get his ultimate off, getting inside of someone, resetting aggro off the tower, getting everyone to stop attacking him, and then using it to burst himself away from the tower, picking up healing as well. It was just a great play from the Maroon jungler. Yeah. Uh, absolutely possible play on the chain. You're, you're exactly right, Coach. Good to see there. To noise sticking around in lane. Tori's got to be very, very careful. Can't take that fight one on one right now. Fuck now responding. Maybe do be one. I don't really think that's anything that they want the fight. You keep your eyes on the map. The Darius will be able to push it. That's our free! Woo! You had 
better check yourself when you're that low on HP to noise sticking around hits that one from downtown. You know, we're looking at Ezreal 9 and 1 right now, Vayne 0 oh, and 5, Leona 0 oh, and 5 as well. Uh, and across the rest of the map, it's a really close game across the rest of the map. In fact, Karthus in the jungle, 5 kills. 5 kills in 13 minutes for a Karthus jungle. That could be the end of Maroon here if they're not careful. Uh, as we got a triple uh, coming down here. Requiem coming out as well. Not gonna be enough. Darius is still alive from old gang. The reinforcements are here and Darius is going to survive. Tenoy going in a tour here. Will that be enough? The flash coming through. One more ability. Gonna find it. Tenoy not really miss much. Ooh, the trouble bubble connects from deep. Got through. That's a lot of damage. B2. Tick. Tick. Boom on the ignite. The rest unneeded in the month going pretty low. Probably not gonna survive this one. Quang in pursuit. Strategy does take it up, but turn around and what they have find of the rest of the maroon team. Oh, once, a, once again, like they were, they had the Darius three v one, and they didn't have the damage. I think it was some some bad pathing maybe there, but they couldn't just converge on him. But then the Darius just keep it moving, keep it moving, and just able to throw his damage everywhere. Uh, and that's exactly what you want to do as a Darius. You want to pick up your healing, tank for your team. Because Darius is the tank right now for the Maroon team. Uh, but just, it's, I'm looking at the bot lane. I'm looking at the bot lane 100% right now. Tanoi having a great game. Uh, but around the rest of the map, if you if you take the bot lane out, if you take mm. the bot lane out of here, it's what? It's a 8-8 eight to eight kill game. Yeah. Yeah, so it's absolutely. just the it's just the bot lane right now is all I'm looking at. Uh, I I wanted to mention a little bit ago when they bought the items, but you see a full Luden's Echo on Zoe, and at 12 and a half minutes you saw the full Rod of Ages on TF. So at 22 and a half minutes TF will get that massive spike of the fully stacked Rod of Ages. As you see Karthus going at the Zoe. Yeah, not gonna be enough there. Uh, actually seven to eight, right? Because the Yumi has a kill as well. Oh no. Eight to eight. No, you're good. You're good. I'm not a math major. Let's not talk about it. No, no, no worries. No worries. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. The, the bot lane, the big difference right now is just Noi playing with reckless abandon. Trouble bubble coming through from deep. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh. It wasn't even close. Good zero chance there. Monk picking up the second one. B2 got it back. I, I don't even know. What do you do about Tenoy at this state? I mean, the Yumi is so strong, dropping so much healing. Uh, just the perfection. Only are you gonna die because you're in that drowsy through metal chapter? Not going to have a but you get slow up chance. You even some damage. You right there to heal. You see, the thing I'm looking at, I think, with the Tenoy is that that's where we're seeing the the biggest uh look at oh they play together a lot tanoi knew exactly which way in the bot lane those guys were going to dodge he was able to hit all of his skill shots because he knew where everyone was going to be wow uh, hitting the vein over the wall on a couple of those he knew oh notorious is gonna dodge left if i aim left i'm picking up that kill and a number of times you saw Ezreal basically firing into nothing, knowing that the, the Notorious was going to end up there. There is the ace. They are changing the towers right now. Maroon looking like they're going to win the first bout of the Duel of the Dragons here. Game number one. Not going the way of Team Gold. You know what? Trying to run away from the Skittles there. Just out of range. This might be their chance to find a kill. There's no Yumi in the vicinity. Tanoi running, running. Silence. Skittles coming through. Trouble Bubble not up for Zoe. It looks like. Goodness, both those skill shots. They do indeed escape. Retreating to this dragon. This one is going to put them right on the soul point. Yes, it will, and it's an ocean soul, which means the regeneration, and that's not what gold needs Maroon to have right now, as damage coming over the wall. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh, they, they, they found it. They, they found exactly what they're looking for. Tenoy getting way too aggressive there. 
and these are the small windows of opportunity because what can they do with this right now because they found the kill out of the thought on killable and they, they now have a numbers man are gonna back like much with it clearing out ward smart uh clearing out the juggle smart how many more times do they need that exact play they have to find to know out quite a few more times uh, they they need to find to know a few more times i agree but do you know what the one problem with that play was lay down me coach leona picked up the kill yes all yes. of that money one thousand gold went into the pocket of leona and you really need that money going to your vein uh at the moment vein without a full item on the other side you have two full items on the ezreal you almost have a death cap and a ludens on the zoe you've got a full jungle item on the cane full i'm sorry a full jungle item and a full black cleaver on the cane you got a full Triforce on the Darius. You even have two full items on the Yumi. Vain for Team Gold sitting without a full item. The thousand gold, the thousand gold could have been put to much better use. But absolutely, they have to keep killing Tanoi. Uh, hopefully, before Tanoi does something like that. Trouble here. Gonna have the flash. Final chapter coming through. Leona going in, and now Deathwish. Ezreal. The oh, the flash. Get. Over here, tragedy going low. Finally, you get the shutdown gold. That goes out of the carcass, which is what they're looking for. Notorious, can they clean up the rest of this fight? This could be massive for them. But but day day, oh the dunks come through. Double kill off the back of a ferocious dunk leading to the ace. They do have a wave in the top lane. They do have four players in the top lane. How far can this push go? Maroon trying to end the debate on which dragon team is the best. Which team from Howard will take the throne for the night in the duel of the dragons? DH responding with Quant coming through there, dropping CC. Solar Flare, there it is. Tanoi, V2, coming through, dropping down the damage. A monk in the back line. So high on the health bar. Quant finally going low and will go down. They get the CC. Here comes the Requiem. DH probably going down here, but still doing damage after death. And they get the kill from Potente. They have to find it, but they won't. Vayne going down. Tragedy next on the chopping block. There's the triple. And back to back aces will end this game. Maroon that's it in cruise control, and they will end up the winners of a pretty easy game number one for them. I'm, I'm looking at this one as it ends at the 2009 mark. And I'm looking at it, Ethan, and I'm going, wow, they had some of those people very low a couple of times in this game. But the self-healing on Darius, the self-healing on Kane, all of the healing coming out of Yumi. And I'm going to take a look at the itemization here as we look at the scoreboard. And I do not know if they had any healing abating items here. Zero Grievous Wounds. I, uh... Zero Grievous Wounds. And that's, that's what I'm going to point at. I'm going to point at that and go, you have two people who self-heal. And you have a Yumi on the board, and you have nothing that stops healing. How many times in those yeah. fights would Darius have died? How many of those fights would Cain have died? How many of those fights would Ezreal have died when the healing from Yumi was not enough? And if I'm going to point at one thing, and there's a couple of different things we could point at, but if one big one would be there's no Grievous Wounds. Um, and that would have been really easy to pick up. It would have been super easy for the... Uh, the Cho'Gath to go uh, Thornmail, pick it up that way. If he was playing tank, he had the Righteous Glory as his first item, so he was definitely going tank. Thornmail gets it for him. Uh, Karthus in the jungle could have picked up Morellanomicon. That would have got it for him. You had AP on the TF. He could have picked up Morellanomicon. And then Vayne doesn't even need the full item. Vayne could have just picked up Executioner's Calling and had it there. Uh, the one person who didn't need it, was probably Leona, but even she could have picked up Thornmail and probably would have been a great choice against an auto attacker like Ezreal. Thornmail would have done wonders on the Leona. Now, I don't mind her picking up the Gargoyle Stone Plate. I think that's really good in the lane. I think that's really good in the lane she was in. However, I think she should have gone for it before the Swifties. She spent 1,100 gold, or I'm sorry, 900 gold on those Swifties before she got any defensive items, and you could definitely tell in the bot lane. Yeah, you definitely, definitely could tell. Uh, the Grievous Wounds were sorely, sorely missed, Coach. Uh, there's a lot of ways you could have done I mean, even, I think I think you hit on it. Just building the Executioner's Blade, right? Like, not committing to the full item, that full gold right away, but 
picking up executioners just to get it done. They had no hopes of killing that Ezreal for almost the whole game. They got it done twice at the end, but I mean, you saw the first time it was a, it was a genuinely good pick. We saw Ezreal get a little bit uh, overzealous. We saw uh, Tenoy uh, go in a little bit too hard. Um, and then the second time, it result them losing the game, right? They gave up everything. Uh, uh, absolutely everything. The whole kingdom. They, they tossed it all in the center. They put all their chips on killing Tenoy. They got it. But what did it cost? All four members of their team going down. Ended up losing the game. So I, I think you're right. That goes right back to building items. That's not the whole game, obviously. Uh, but it feels like a big component. And maybe something that is a sign of, hey, the mental game isn't all there for them tonight. Hey, and let's let's not go that far. Maybe let me put it this way: Tanoi is a wonderful ADC. Uh, he is the reason that Team Maroon took out the Peacocks two uh, two weeks ago. Absolutely, the reason was Tanoi. He is a terrific ADC. I don't want to say enough. I can't say enough good things about him. Uh, he's terrific, and they play it well, and his support plays very well, and they play around him well. If you look at a lot of those team fights, they were playing around Tanoi. They were putting Tanoi in a position to win the game for them, and he's super good on this Ezreal, and Ezreal's not even that meta right now. You saw they banned ADCs away. They left the Ezreal open. We did the same thing, and he's just so good on the Ezreal even when it's not super meta. Uh, it's going to have to be another lane that picks it up for Team Gold if they're going to win Game 2 and push it to a Game 3. The good news is they were winning the jungle. Absolutely, without a question, they were winning the jungle. They were even in the top lane, even in the mid lane. They just have to watch out for the bot lane. Maybe they could pick a safer comp in the bot lane. I'm thinking maybe Ash Brom. Ash Brom is a super safe comp. Caitlyn Morgana is a super safe comp in the bot lane. Uh, just to stay away from Tanoi diving in on you, or the ability like Morgana Black Shield, being able to shield some of the abilities away. Uh, something to stop there. They were playing that dive comp Vain Leona. And I said if they played it right, it was going to work. But if they didn't play it right, it was going to be a problem. And I was kind of right. It didn't work out. And they had a couple of great chances. We talked about the Karthus coming in on that one gank like four seconds early, and that's all it takes. If you're four seconds early, you saw uh, the Zenith Blade come out from the Leona during that fight. She missed it by about 12 pixels. She was just two steps too far away. If the Zenith Blade hits, she gets the root there. That's a completely different gank down in the bot lane. I think Ezreal got a double kill on that and walked away. So if yeah. that Zenith Blade comes in and gets a hit, she's going to get her stun as well, because that's the combo. Zenith Blade into your stun. And at that point, we're off into the races going the other direction. So it's a couple of seconds here, a couple of seconds there, maybe some interesting itemization. Not that the items were bad, but that the choice of which items to get in which order could possibly have been better. Uh, but yeah, if you could slow Tanoi down, even if it's just by playing defensively, if you could slow him down from his scaling, his snowballing, and win your other lanes, I think game two, we might see a lot more out of gold. And I think it definitely goes longer than 20 minutes. We will see. Let me let me hit you with something, Coach. Theoretical question. Uh, you were you were talking, and something sparked in me. Uh, talking about saying, playing a very safe bot lane. Bot lane saw earlier today, Karthus Senna. What if you just stick that ball and say, hey, standard tower, you've got the range, you've got the CC to stay safe, and you scale so hard in the late game. There comes a point where it doesn't matter how bad your laning phase was, you're playing center, you're playing Karthus, two champions that scale very well in Senna's case infinitely with the souls. Is is that something that even crosses your mind? Uh, some weird bot lane like that that you know won't be relevant in the early game, you know you're just giving up bot lane, but you may have a shot late game. There, there could be a cheese bot lane you could put together. I would not do it with Karthus just because he is so immobile. His, his only mobility ability is the wall, which slows his opponent, which makes him look faster, even though he's not getting faster. It's the only way he has to escape is to drop that wall and then hope they can't get to him or to drop his aura and to damage them when they do get there. I I like Karthus in the jungle. I like him a lot there. I like Karthus as a support. I do not like him as the ADC because as the ADC, you have to farm and you can get caught out trying to farm. 
So as far as safety is concerned, I wouldn't pick Karthus ADC, but I like where your head's at with a little bit of cheese down there. Maybe playing a marksman in the mid lane, maybe playing somebody in, in the bot lane, maybe like an, uh, an echo. Maybe playing like an echo in the bot lane who has some mobility, has some escape options, can still scale from there, and then your marksman can still be in the mid lane. But you need to have a marksman on the board. Uh, I mean, you can play without one. It just gets a really, really interesting playing without a marksman. Samira locked. I report, chat, Samira alert, Samira spotting. Uh, we've got a Samira that survived through bands and someone willing to pick it up. So TH scooping up that Samira for the squad. I like it a lot. I uh, really hope it's in the mid lane. I know I like her ADC. I know last week I was saying, oh, Samira ADC, let's go. I hope that Samira's in the mid lane because playing Samira into Tanoi could be disaster. Absolutely, as uh, Matete is going to first pick the Malphite. Um, something that you don't see first picked a lot, definitely, I would say. It's not like a very priority pick. At the same time, leading with it, kind of playing with your hand open can be good because you can save your uh, picks. You might want to hide for later on, and we've got a full-on Wombo combo brewing. Woo! Can, do, you, do you smell what Maruin is cooking right now? See, I, I like the Malphite. I love anyone who can set up the Yasuo. The more knockups you have, the better Yasuo gets. I don't mind the Malphite first pick because that could be Malphite support. So I don't mind. It does not lock it into being a top laner. It could be Malphite support, which I have seen. And if you have Malphite support with anything with Tenoi, Malphite Ultimate becomes an insta kill for the Absolutely. ADC. Absolutely. Absolutely does. Uh, here's the real question. How far are they willing to commit with the Tsushima Wombo combo? Are we going to see some more knockups come through as we do see Mordekaiser locked in on the other side, waiting on their other pick? Will be a Cassiopeia. I like that pick a lot, but that does confirm that Samira will be going to the bot lane. Um, Not so fast, Ethan. Nope, don't say it. We, Cassiopeia. We've, we've used up all our crazy juice for the day. Ca You're the one who was talking about cheese ADCs. You were the one talking about cheese ADCs. Cassiopeia has been used as an ADC in the past. Cassiopeia has been used as an ADC in pro play. And you could keep your hybrid marksman, Samira, in the mid lane where she can scale. Uh, so that's that definitely could be a thing as we see Morgana get banned away. As I, I, so, but that could be a Cassiopeia ADC. Wait for it, Ethan. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. If, it, if it's Cassiopeia ADC, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, it's you were looking game. for Karthus. You were looking for Karthus, Ethan. Here's hey, your hey, cheese. Hey, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I got to temper it a little bit. We do see Kane coming through, uh, which, depending on your form, will have a knockup. I believe red knocks up. Blue does not. So uh, if Amon goes to red Kane, which I believe is really the only way to go, unless the other team has a bunch of squishies, which... <laughs> Mordekaiser kind of throws a wrench in that plan. I think that'll be going red. So Wombo Combo fully engaged right now. Uh, we, we've got our foot on the gas pedal. We're, we're holding it firm for the time being. They do ban out the Rakan for fear of the full Wombo. I respect that. Yeah, but, that, that could have been bad. Could have been bad. Alistar still on the table. Alistar still on the table. Scion support still on the table. You it's a thing. ADC and send Yone mid with Alistar support. Big brain. Uh, Chogath. Chogath support could be a thing. He's got a knockup. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, it, it groups up for the Malphite ult. You can really combo together. They are putting all their eggs in one basket, though, admittedly. Uh, like, if, if Orca doesn't have a big game, or whoever their ADC is doesn't have a big game with all this setup, uh, they are going to have a bad, bad time because these champions don't really do anything else, coach. You know, we're looking at that Yasuo. That Yasuo could be mid, but that could be Tanoi on that Yasuo ADC. Ooh. That could that be dirty. Would that would that be could hot. be dirty. Uh, we see the Rengar come in for V2. Hey, the Braum! Okay, with the Braum, it's definitely going to be Samira ADC. Yep. Cassiopeia does not auto-attack fast enough to stack Braum's passive. So that will confirm it, at least for me, that that's going to be Samira ADC. But talking about safety, I mentioned the Braum. Braum, a Absolutely. very safe pick, able to put up the wall, able to save everyone behind him. And that'll be huge. Final pick's going to be Pantheon. Whoa. Pantheon support. Pantheon, Pantheon support. Pantheon bot lane as of right no. now. 
Nope. I think. Oh, maybe. Okay. All right. All right. There all it right. is. There it is. Tanoi on the Yasuo. That's dirty. Yasuo Pantheon bot lane. That is dirty. I don't. I don't even want to watch this game. That is dirty. Oh my goodness. That is. is that uh... is going to be aggressive. That is going to be abusive. I think we're going to see Samira and Brahm hiding not under tower, behind their tower. I think Pantheon Q is going to be disturbing. He's going to be throwing that spear. He's just going to sit back and throw it. Oh, um, so, you know, you're going to see Pantheon Ultimate coming out. He's going to be able to get to team fights all over the map. Uh, I, I don't think the mid lane in this game is going to matter. I'm not, Bold prediction. The mid lane in this game is not going to matter. Not one bit. You, yeah, uh, that's where you're they're, at. they're evenly matched. It's an even mid lane. It's Cass into Ori. They uh, both I think have... Cass has a I think Cass has a slight edge because Oriana's just a straight control mage. I think if you can Oh, it's tough because when Cass sets up the full combo, Oriana can just shockwave and it's like, well, back to square one. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna have a slight edge to tragedy in the mid lane uh, on that a Slight edge, slight edge, but I think it's gonna go neutral. I think that'll be a neutral lane. Mm -hmm. Uh I think we're gonna have fun in the top lane in the jungle. I think yeah. bot lane's gonna play super safe for gold. Bot lane gonna play super safe. Top lane and jungle, that's where the fun's gonna be. Kane walking through walls, coming to get people. Rengar jumping out of bushes, coming to get people. And then in the late game, Malphite Ultimate or Mordekaiser Carry. Which one do you like? I like I'm 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 feeling the Malphite right now. And I just want to say, real quick aside, people in chat that are saying they don't understand League of Legends. For sticking it out with us, we appreciate. You know, it's just because Coach and I are just such a dynamic duo in the booth. You know, you you. you <laughs> it's, it's pretty much like going to stand up and uh, a League of Legends match. But um, I I like the Malphite. I really enjoy watching these compositions, these Wombo combo. Uh, everybody's a go button compositions because they are easy to pull off but hard sometimes to win with because the other team knows exactly what they're going to do, right? It's like um, if you if you watch football, you watch football for a long time. Well, the Daily Tomlinson used to be in the Chargers, right? Everybody and their mom knew he was going to get the ball every single time. But it was great because no one could stop it. So yeah. everybody knows that the But that's also, why, that's also why San Diego had the best play action in the yeah. league, though. Because when they didn't give it to him, you still thought he was getting it, and people were running downfield wide open. I'm I'm thinking if they can if they can stop the Malphite from getting fed. If the Malphite ultimate is just a knockup, it's just a setup for Yasuo. If he's not one shotting with it, if he doesn't build full AP, and I don't think he will. I think he'll if go he tank. doesn't, I think, I he'll, think go tank. he'll go tank. And I think I know Mordecai is going full AP. If they can hold him in check. If if Mordekaiser takes Malphite to the Death Realm, uh, Malphite can't ultimate. Yeah. If Mordekaiser takes Yasuo to the Death Realm, uh, Malphite's setup doesn't matter. Uh, the Mordekaiser gets rid of a lot of combos. Mordekaiser takes Oriana to the Death Realm. No shockwave. So uh, the Mordekaiser, if, he, if TH can come out of the top lane and do some work... That can screw up a lot of the combos, but I'm going to I'm gonna hang my hat on the Rengar early game. Rengar jumping out of bushes at people. I think that's going to be fun to watch. And then late game, not early game, but late game, the Samira coming out of nowhere. You heard it here first. So uh, I, I like the analogy we were going with with the Chargers, uh, oddly enough. If the Danley Tomlinson is Tanoi in this now, is who Tonyo Gates on the team? Who person that prosper all their eyes being on Tonyo? Uh, who's who's gonna be my big man in the end zone? Just vibing. just. Uh, it, it's gotta be Orca. It absolutely has to be Orca. Uh, you you'd think I would say Pantheon. You'd think I'd say Pantheon because he's Tonyo's partner in crime right there. But uh, but I think Pantheon is Rivers. Pantheon kind of decides where it's all going. But I think Orca is the other one who's going to get attributed to a lot of the setups. Anything that sets up Yasuo can set up Kane as well. Not as well. It's not going to be as good of a setup. 
But anything that sets up Yas can also set up the cane. So I think to follow your analogy, I think Gates is definitely Orca. All right. Uh, Orca is the Antonio Gates. I think I'm inclined to agree. Uh, I think that Pan is also an option. He has more of that. The Melvin Floyd. You know, it might come through. Uh, we are in the game. Going to fall at five seconds here. All pause. Coach there i'm i'm good you're good mr producer man i in the sky all good five four three two one go on the hand side we do have howard community college maroon dragons with matete orca among team captain tenoy and flex on them in the support on the other side for the gold dragons teach tenoy as you rank glorious and Quonk rounding out the team. Last game, awesome love action coach. I think we might get in here. Both teams gravitating the river. This time though, will be Gold Dragons. Who, uh, it, it was Gold Dragons last time too, so they just oh, changed was. colors. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, Pink thought they get seen going into the jungle there. Okay. And actually, okay. really quick, I'll, uh, I'm going to step on you really quick here, Ethan. Uh, Pepsi, DK, one, two, three, four. If you've been here for two hours, I hope you hit that follow button. And anybody else who's enjoying us, me and Ethan going back and forth here, hit that follow button. You'll be able to get notified every Thursday when Ethan's going live, and hopefully I'll be with him for some of those. But, Ethan, sorry for stepping on you there as we're looking no, at Team Gold coach, here. Coach, you, you win the little work by plugging all right, you truly are hands in the feet now of, of people. Uh, back and inspired me. I, I, I'm not doing my due diligence. The NEC is sponsored by HyperX. No matter who you are, or how you play, we're all gamers. And by ESTV, the first ever dedicated for esports and game personalities as the game's getting underway. I mean, talking about the NECC here, coach. Everyone, chat, thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this beautiful, beautiful new thing. We saw the University of Alabama join today. Coach, what, what are your thoughts about just in general? Some big D1s joining the NECC's esports uh, collegiate conference. I mean, the NECC is a D3 athletic conference out of New England and now drawing these big names from esports. Oh, National Esports Conference. Okay, the, the name is officially changed, but the, the sprouting out of. Uh, Coach, how, how does that make you feel? Like excited? What's what's the emotion when you see like Bama, the big D one uh, for football, just joining for esports? A lot of these schools that are just kind of getting some notoriety. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to say to our perverse producer, that's the first I'm hearing of the name change. So I'm gonna have to get a hold of my sports information director. Uh, We're finding out now that you should not listen to us at the moment because he's telling us that might not have dropped yet. So you guys all might be the 34 of you watching don't might be the it. first don't ones to hear. Don't do it. Don't clip it. Whatever you do, don't clip it. Uh, but we're going to see Rengar here going up for an early gank possibly on the Malphite as there's a fight in the bot lane as well. But Tate trying to turn this one around but Tenoy running away. Well, the one to two coach. But Tate holding ground. Level up. Jeez, we have the flash. Get enough. Going to burn the flash across to Noi. V2, don't we'll get back in the area. The 1v2! Matete! Rock solid! Oh! Jumping out of the bush. They're gonna end up trading one for one. The difference there being is that uh, Matete had the corrupting pots uh, going into just the, the Doran shield for the Mordekaiser. So uh, the corrupting pots able to keep him alive longer there. Wow! Wow. The Ignite one tick off towards there. Kwan barely surviving as well. Flex on him and Tenoy performing very well early on coach. You expect Tenoy to be very scary on this Asuo and it's early days, but it's definitely come to fruition so far. As I said, they're not gonna be playing under the tower. They're gonna be playing behind it. But you were asking me what I was thinking about the big D1s joining. Uh I think it's great that the big D1s are finally joining the the conferences because it means that their teams are going from being club teams to being a little bit more we've seen a lot of the big uh the bigger schools with club programs but it's nice to see some of them joining up with varsity programs now 
uh, or just giving some more attention to their club programs. And the, the more the big schools go after it, the bigger colli collegiate esports is going to get. Absolutely. Um, I mean, the space, working in the space a bit, uh, as a student kind of thing, indoctrinated into it, it's been such a interesting process, just like seeing it grow so much, so exponentially, Coach. I mean, you work in the space. We've seen it grow so much in the past two and a half year alone. Uh, what are the future prospects for us? But Tay Tay getting through the top lane here with TH just a little bit. I mean, it's one of those that the, the, the teleport coming in. We're going to wait on my answer here. Teleport ball. Torius going very, very low. Good to go down. The Samira going back to the fountain. Slip and slide. Going through. Tanope going to have to flash. Survive. Whip survive. Another teleport coming to the bot side. Orca going to go down. As does Tragedy. Flex on him. Will die for the cause as well. Tanoi going so, so low. Will go down to a monk. Quap, the only one remaining. Tanoi trying to get up there and give me that kill. But will not be able to claim it from the grasp of a monk. So that was actually an extended ace there, uh, but two members of gold respawned before it could be a true ace. But that was an extended ace, five kills in the bot lane. Uh, coming across, ironically, none of them coming across onto the Yasuo. Yeah, uh, just gonna two dagger boots and a Doran's blade right now. Uh, they will be on the Dragon's and you gotta be careful. Dragon plays zero games, nearly taking them out. Gonna back right here. Six minutes into the game, we've got a nine to find kills. Two. Monk, a monk hadn't seen it, right? Yeah, because jump, jumped on board. A monk just doesn't respect V2 here. Ooh, gotta be careful. It is level six, however. It does see that V2 only level four, so could be a decent amount of the reason to stick around in the middle. Absolutely. Uh, V2 does have the only two, or two of the three kills right now for uh, Team Gold. As we see Matai one more time in the top lane getting help from the minions. But we talked about if the Rengar gets fed, he's going to be able to jump out of bushes and just push the delete button. But a roam coming from the bot side. Wow. Absolutely blew up Tanoi in that gang. Tanoi looking to find something on a tragedy rank. And who was there but Orca? In addition to flex on him, blows it up, absolutely just snuffed out before anything could really happen. And there was really nothing, I mean, everybody was converging there, uh, and, you know, V2 didn't have a push to jump out of on that one. Uh, but the roams we have seen by flex on them have been really good uh, so far. Uh, and, like, when he was on the Yumi, you saw him jumping around, different people helping out where he was needed. Uh, yeah. But that one, a great, great move there. On right, its level four support, roaming, allowing your ADC to get some solo XP. Yasuo, the first ADC to hit level six. Uh, I mean, what's the last time you saw an AD ADC, a higher level than a jungler? <laughs> Uh, it has been a while, and it just it kind of is starting to smell like uh, smell like a, a stomp that we saw. But two v cheese, here. cheese alert, three cheese three alert, here. cheese alert. Will be two. There's gonna be a one v three though. Tanoi or v two picking it up can they find the cone Tanoi. Wind wall coming through. There's the slip and slot trying to get out. Goes to the minion. Goes back in. Tanoi rocks conquer. Not gonna matter. So good gank there. We're not even the top lane to trade one for one. Go across the board. A three for one trade. And that's going to be big for Team Gold here, coach. That was huge. As you saw V2 come out of that bush. Now we talked about being a delete button. You see Pantheon building attack damage not building tank he thinks oh i'm tanky enough uh rengar came out of the bush did a whole bunch of damage and when you got a samira and a brahm there as well samira's in trouble here but when you've got a samira and a brahm there as well you can't be taking that kind of burst damage as a pantheon because if you go down before you can get your shield up in front of you you can't do anything to save your lane partner situation one goes down right away out him going low tanoi left the 1v2 there's the ulti coming through enough damage to pick a boat up oh my goodness oh, you know sweet. team team gold was doing well they were keeping tanoi in check and then all of a sudden the double kill there 
And that's going to be back. And look, he went boots first. And now all of a sudden, he's going to be able to go back. He's going to be able to get a couple of plates. When he goes back, he's going to get half an item. And then all of a sudden, Tanoi is going to be off and running as another fight starts in the top lane. Yeah, Tanoi is starting to get off to the races here. Those two people, now that was happening, all coming through. There's the Miasma game coming through from the lane. Beautifully set up by Tragedy. Easy pickings for V2 to just finish that one off. And Mike stick found and try to push up the lane a little bit. Tanoi is scooping up some gold off of that. Ooh. Fifth kill there for V2. Yeah. Fifth kill for V2 there. Big, big kill for V2 there. Ooh, Tanoi coming through. Alright, goes airborne, Brock with the shield up, retreating, Tenoy has a lot of damage, Brock's conqueror going to go down, there is the NATO, Notorious flashing over the wall, Tenoy going to pick up yet another kill, now has shut down gold on their head at 3, 1, and 2, Tenoy responding down to the bot side, Orca coming in, we're gonna have a bit of a scrap here, 3v2, swing around the dragon wagon, going in, Tenoy, now Notorious left their tower, and here comes the dive! Going down to Noi picks it up. They've got a wave and they've got the numbers. And that was just very unfortunate there. Uh, they they were in a bad spot. They really don't want to fight a Yasuo in the jungle because his his whirlwind is gonna come find him. You have nowhere to dodge in that little jungle hallway right there as TP gets back to lane. Yeah, Frank going here the three v two jumps in. Oh. But not before the Mordekaiser will be able to scoop up a kill there on the top side. So they do accrue some sort of value. Orca going down the bot side as well. So once all said and done, a two for two trade across the map. But scooping up the tower on the bot side is what's going to be most important. Bag of 600 gold to noise head. Coach just bought a Phantom Mancer BF sword on back. Absolutely massive. And I'm just sitting here with my head down looking. They were doing so well. They were doing so well. And in the last four minutes, Yasuo has picked up six kills. Yeah. And that's I, that's the beginning of the end right there, I believe. Jeez, we almost get this one easy kill to scoop up. TH has nowhere to go. Matete just going to scoop it up. Is going tanky as predicted. Female fight kind of about a few patches to right in their face. See it every now and then just to annoy a very squishy composition, but not going to see it come into play here. They are on this next dragon. Will be the second dragon for them of the game. It's annoying pushing in the top lane with some friends. Flex on them in the vicinity as well. And we said the drink gets taken there, and then the collapse just not fast enough. Yeah, not fast enough at all. And Flex out of here in the top lane, Coach. It looks like they are trying to just pull a bit of a lane swap. See, Tanoi set to the top lane. You do see Flex on him set to the top lane. Uh, and look how smart this is. They scoop up all this play gold off the tower. Tanoi's back pockets are so full of money right now. The man can't even sit down. Orca trying to run out. Tanoi going to miss the bola not going to find it th the chase through the jungle does get the knock up to come through and here comes the rest of the team it looked like a long chase but it may have just been a bait to the city just in the middle v2 gonna get absolutely melted th gotta run now's the no oh big cassio ulti but they're not gonna find the damage they need off the back end th can't quite find no way and there's the alt coming through a mock picks up the kill they pound the CC, but they couldn't quite get the damage. You know, and I, I don't really like that one. Cassiopeia had that great ult, and uh, Mordekaiser took the Yasuo into the Death Realm, and then Cass just kind of walked away. Uh, you know, she, she has to stick around at least a little bit to do something. So when Mordekaiser comes out of the Death Realm, he just doesn't die, which absolutely got melted immediately as he came out. Uh, V2, as you said, did get deleted there, but he did take out Orca before going down, so the junglers went one for one, uh, but the rest of the fight went poorly for Team Gold. Uh, yeah, poorly is a, a nice way of putting how that went. As you said, their communication not on the same page here. Tragedy may be in a whole world of trouble, caught between a rock and a whole lot of damage. Tanoi channeling here at the back. They're just going to let this next charge come through and give up on the push. They've gotten so 
much gold onto Tanoi through these tower plates, Coach. The way that they've played around them has been impressive going in here. V2 going to go very low. Tanoi can slide, but will probably go down. Flex on them. All that's left. Teleport coming through on the back end, so they are going to scoop up kills on both members of the bot lane there. Matete responding, but it's going to be far, far too late. Claiming a whole lot of shutdown gold, Coach. So that is the kind of thing you need to do if you want to crawl back in this game if you are the gold team. I mean, if you're looking at it, V2 on the Rengar, up to seven kills. Unfortunately, they have six deaths. Uh, so they're feeding them back as quickly as they're taking them. Uh, the big one, though, we talked about that I thought the mid laners would go even. And oh, uh, a monk on the Oriana proving me dead wrong as they just harassed the Cassiopeia in the entire laning phase. As you see, 6-1 on Oriana, 0-4 oh, on the Cassiopeia. Yeah, and uh, proved me even more wrong because I gave the slight edge to tragedy there. Orca might be caught out. He jumped from the bush, come through a monk. Not really wanting to stick it around, or do they? Turns it back around, flip the script, and dip the chip. Pantheon only coming through. Here's Tanoi. They're laying down so much damage. Down goes Quonk. Tanoi pops the blast gone. But on the other side of the wall, those two staring down, tries to get in the bush. What can V2 do from this position? Hops back over flashing. Fancy footwork. They do give him a take. Hey, who DD themselves? Wow. That that was the play. We talked about it. If Rengar got fed, he'd be able to jump out of a bush, push the delete button. Got a little bit of help from the tower there, but absolutely had no business getting a kill and walking away, and that's exactly what happened. Ooh, notorious to be careful after all that work just put in. You don't want to die under tower. Knockups coming through to Noy, not going to jump in on that one. Cassiopeia, not where they want to be. Tenoy slip and slide. 2v4 situation goes down as Tenoy flex on them. All that remains. They will pick it up. Notorious dropping the ulti among Norka. Oh, TH just dropped the ulti into a monk right away. Can a monk survive the stealth thermal counter? Looks like probably, yeah. It's going to be caught out in two or 1v3 situations, only to go down with relative ease. Dragon is up in 30 seconds, Coach. What are we looking at going into this neutral objective? I I'm seeing that it's actually the vision and the placement is in favor of Team Gold here, so they might be able to take this Drake. Uh, they're going to have to get Cassiopeia there quickly as you see the bot lane fall, but they're calling for it. They want people here, Team Maroon, streaming towards it, and they might actually leave the dragon as bait. That might be a dragon bait. Mm. They might want to try to take the team fight once the dragon has already been engaged. Here it is! The bait, they're trying to get a pick here. Knockup's coming through. Can't they kill Tanoi? Doesn't look like it. Oh my goodness, the damage! The double kill! Matete coming through with the ulti. Just drops a mountain on the head of the gold team. And, and the big problem there is that it was a 5v3. Uh, you didn't have Cassiopeia, you didn't have Mordekaiser, you needed to wait a little bit longer. Patience is key in that kind of a situation. Absolutely key. They saw the opportunity and they said, go, go, go. The only thing is, once you're in there, there's no easy way to get the TH knocked up. Not going to be able to really go anywhere. Tanoi claims yet another life. 9, 3, and 10 right now. As Team Maroon will push in in the school of the Dragons. Howard Community College on Howard Community College. B2 in the bush there. Don't forget about it. Oh, Ward comes through. Very. I don't know who placed that. Who, who has a... Uh, that was Tanoi. He placed that far set alteration. That was big brain right there. May have saved one of their lives. 200 IQ ward placement. Absolutely. They are going to reset. They, ooh, maybe they're going to bait it out. Baron's up in two minutes. There's no way they stay around for that long. They can it's a 5v3 again. They have to wait. They have to wait here. It's a 5v3 again. They need Cass and they need Mord. Absolutely. Uh, they're, they're just gonna be pushing him in, right? Uh, there's no reason not to. You are feeling this strong. They're going to just keep on going with Tay Tay, looking for opportunities. Each player looking for that opportunity to hit that go button and just get Tanoi out to the back line and absolutely massacre Team Gold. They aren't gonna find it, continuing just to clear vision and smother them. By keeping five members here, coach, they absolutely demand a five member defensive response. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's that's what's holding them there. 
I, I am going to ask our producer because I, I might just be on an outdated uh, browser screen. Uh, however, I'm seeing on the Twitch that it still says Illinois Wesleyan versus Carol. So if I'm an out, on an outdated browser screen, the producer can just yell in my ear. But if not, he might want to update that. Good catch, good catch. You know, that's that's the producer and you taking over the technical director. We like it, coach. We like it. A monk holding under tower here. Going to toss out the shield. The push has reversed a little bit of momentum. They're going to take Baron right now right under Team Gold Zones. A monk, the only one holding back. Ooh, to no right, I'm, I'm being told it's just me needing to refresh. So we're good. We're good. Our producer absolutely knows what he's doing. But yeah, no, Team Maroon, with, there's no vision there. Uh, they're pinging. They're pinging question marks on it as Team Gold because they don't know where Maroon is. They're they're pinging question marks. They're trying to figure out where everybody is. Oh, but Tanya's gonna blind you. There's a big Casabio Starfall coming through. Tragedy. Gonna have to fight the lead. Flex out of the back line. TH fighting Matej. That'd be a big pick, but I don't think it's gonna matter. A lot of them going low, but none of them falling. A nearly clean ace. Orca, the only one to go. A triple kill for a monk. Woo! A monk put in some work this game. Ten, one, and six. We were looking for Antonio Gates, and by golly, we found him. They are pushing right in, Team Maroon. Coach, I don't think they're going to be denied here in the duel of the Dragons. It's looking an awful lot like Team Maroon's going to be able to get the win, but they're going to stop the push. Save it for another day. You know, we've seen this before, though. We don't want to go too far too fast with the announcing here. We saw Valpo in a similar Valparaiso. situation. We saw it against St. Ambrose. It was there. As we look at it, here goes V2 in on the on the Malphite. Taking the Malphite low. Malphite alone there. I don't think Tanoi is going to be able to catch up. Uh, he's got... Oh, he has the jump. Remember, the jump gives you some distance. Uh, far side alteration going to go down, though. So that'll be down for a minute. And the Baron was not up. They were at the Baron. I don't believe it was up, though. It was not up. Yeah, it was It was up in 30 seconds when they were done. Yeah, they it was were just... Up. It was they the Rift, they the Rift Herald. They took the Rift Herald is what they did. Yeah. They took the Rift Herald. I was thinking Baron as well, but I, then I looked up at the clock and went, oh, it's it wasn't time for Baron yet. <laughs> However, I did call it. This game did go longer than 20 minutes. Absolutely correct. It did. You also called the Big Tenoy performance, and I believe you called a monk as our Antonio Gates, but all that will be talked about later. Tenoy going in. Let's get the two man all the notorious going to escape, but B2 is taken out. Tragedy. Oh, not where you want to tell poor Matete. I don't think about an ulti here sometime soon, right? They're all grouped up. This would be a massive map fight all theater tower. Want to undergo the dive. Notorious going low. Has to stay alive. The flash to the back line. Oh my god, it's, it's a massacre. It's a massacre. Starfall on the top. THP, the last to go. Wow, the triple kill. The FF. The ace. And in the duel of the Dragons, Howard Community College Maroon will be the winners. And that's <laughs> that's an interesting one right there. Uh, V2 going down in that last fight so early. That was the entirety of their damage. V2 ended that game with 11 kills. Uh, so you're thinking V2, 11 kills. Great game. 22-minute game with 11 kills. Great game. Look at the second number. Nine deaths. Yeah. I, I try to impart it on my team all the time. You can't carry if your kills and deaths equal out. You're feeding as much as you're killing. Somebody in the opposing team is going to be just as fed as you. To, to truly carry your team, you have to keep yourself alive. I would rather have my carry at 6-1 and one than at 11-9. and nine. Every time. 100% every time. Absolutely. And uh, as you said, it felt like kind of a Kind of a historic moment in a young program's history. Have both their teams going at it in conference play. Hey, Howard CC, if you're still in chat, uh, when, when you've out of you, get, get out of us on Twitter. Get out that CC. Get at me. Uh, favorite moments. Clip clip some stuff. If you got some specific clips, love to talk League of Legends in the off time. You know, right, right before bed. Check Twitter. See what's popping. Uh... <laughs> I'm excited to see what both teams learn from that thought of you. Because as you said, they've gone at it a lot, Coach. But there's something that's undeniably different about playing a stage game. It's true in traditional sports. You know, I, I played a lot of travel volleyball. I played a lot of volleyball uh, just in general. 
Um, played a lot of baseball. Yo, scrimming's cool, but there's something different, isn't there? There's something different about when it actually matters. It's definitely something different when the cameras turn on, when everybody's eyes are on you. Uh, it's a completely different thing, completely different game, completely different mental. Um, and, you know, I thought we were going to see a much different match there. The biggest thing on that board behind me, on the scoreboard, 10 kills for Oriana and a big zero for Cassiopeia. Absolutely. That was the difference, absolutely the difference in that match. Um we could talk about Tanoi getting fed in the mid to late game. We could talk about all the ultimates that were setting up Yasuo. Let's talk about the mid lane. And I said it wasn't going to matter. I put my hat in the ring. Mid lane, nah. It's going to be top lane and bot lane. Maybe some jungle. Mid lane's going to go neutral. Boy, was I wrong. A monk putting on a clinic on how to play Oriana. Absolutely putting on a clinic. That is the conclusion. Oh, Howard CC and Jet. Of course. It was a great match. Thanks to you guys. Um, uh, Coach, do you have any closing thoughts before we end the stream for the night? I mean, outside of, you know, we appreciate everyone in chat for sticking around. We appreciate our producer behind the scenes making things happen. Little Wizard of Oz style. What else have you got for us, Coach? I mean, we watched... Two completely different matches tonight. They were both fun to watch in their own ways. Uh, I loved watching Howard go against each other. I loved watching them, like, knowing the tendencies of their opponent, knowing what they could do, what they couldn't do. Uh, it made it really interesting. It made it that uh, we saw some stuff that you normally wouldn't see. Watching someone hit every shot that they were predicting just because they know every third time they go left i'm going left on the third time uh watching a v2 on the rengar just watching them know oh i could definitely jump out of this bush right now because their reflexes are just slow enough that i could get out of here after doing it if you know your opponent that well you're going to see some fun things that you wouldn't see against opponents that you don't know as well it's really fun for the spectators and it's really fun for us calling this match Absolutely, we had a blast of a night. If you have not followed by now, I don't know what you're doing. Smack the follow button. Just just absolutely obliterate it. <laughs> All right, but we really appreciate everyone for sticking around tonight. You know, we had the technical difficulties, everything that comes along with a broadcast, but we got it done, and so did the Maroon team. Just want to wish from the bottom of my heart that everyone at home has a truly blessed night. We'll see you next week, Thursday.